Hi, this is Roger Moore, and you're listening to James Bond Radio. Hello, and welcome to James Bond Radio. This is episode number 146. In other words, 146 episodes into the game we are. And today, we're going to be looking at part three of GoldenEye. With me, as always, is the main man, Mr. Tom Sears. How are you, my friend? I'm very well, my friend. How, how are you doing? Are you excited to uh, to conclude oh. our, our look at GoldenEye? I know I am. Well, I tell you what, I've almost mm. been surprised. Like, I've always thought GoldenEye was was a really good film. I've mm. always really, really enjoyed it. Occasionally, I have thought that it might be a little outdated mm-hmm. in terms of the look, but I still think the feel and the style is is right up there. But I have been surprised by how good the first two thirds of this film has been. Mm. Like Brosnan has been on form yeah. completely, like absolutely killing it. And we mentioned obviously the last two episodes gone through so many brilliant scenes as well. Like, and the dialogue, we mentioned it loads, but the dialogue in this film is so good. Bond and M, Bond and Moneypenny, Bond and Xenia, you know, Bond and Oromov, yeah. Bond and, and Trevelyan. There's just some really, really kick-ass sparkling dialogue. So I really hope hand on heart, that part three delivers the goods as well. Yeah, me too, man. It's like, like we said last time, isn't it? It's most, whenever you hear criticisms about a lot of movies these days, it's like, it's good until the last act and that's where it Mm. all falls apart, you know? So it'll be interesting to see uh, what our thoughts on on GoldenEye are. And of course, next up after this, we'll be doing our 90 second reviews as well. So the listeners can have their say. It'll be interesting. I'm particularly curious about that because I feel like these days, you know, the Brosnan is the is the man on the receiving end of some of some bashing, isn't he? Bless his heart. There is a lot of that. There um, is a lot of that. And yeah. I feel like that's a pretty normal thing when the new dude takes over, you know, and especially yeah. if the new dude is super successful and super popular, the last guy yeah. is like, well, that's old news now. That's a bit outdated or whatever, you know. You can imagine, you know, when Roger hung up his Walter, you know what I mean, that, that it would have, the reaction against him and all that kind of stuff would have would have happened. So, so yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see what the, uh, the JBR Massive have to say about it. Mm. But uh, and interestingly, just along those lines, yeah. thinking about Daniel Craig, mm. he started to get one or two doubters, like uh, following oh. Spectre and stuff, yeah. and in terms of you know the longevity of that he's been in the role and the age and all that sort of stuff. So maybe when the next one comes in, he you know there might be a few people saying he wasn't as good, but then they forget you know they'll forget how good yeah the, you know he is when he came on the scene as yeah. as. Pierce Brosnan was with Goldeneye, I think. Do you know what? I think I think what it is is when when you have a longer running bond, I know this one's a little bit different, obviously, because you had Timbo in the middle there and, and a long mm. break and all the rest of it. But um the difference is is when you have a long running bond who retires and then you've got the new dude come in who takes over, it's almost like, oh man. Because obviously, I mean, if you compare um you know, the, the Sean of You and Live Twice, who was still cool, but he was, you know, he, he, he was a little bit out of shape and stuff. He wasn't at his best, was he? If you look at yeah. Sean in Dr. No. no, you know, I mean, especially Goldfinger, the man just is in absolute yeah. physical shape. Do you know what I mean? He's like at, in his absolute yeah. prime. And then by You and Live Twice, he's starting to look a bit kind of tired and like he's had enough. And then when you see George in that beach scene at the beginning of Majesties. Yeah. It's like, damn, that's a dude in yeah. the prime of his life right there. You know what I mean? And I feel like yeah. it's when that first bond kind of takes over. And you you know, you could say the same thing with Casino yeah. Royale as well. You've got the, you know, the young buff dude taking over the role who's way more physical yeah. than perhaps any bond that's gone before him. You know, it's kind of like it makes you sit up and kind of be like, whoa, like this dude means business. It's a bit like you know him I mean? following Roger as well. Yeah. Same, same yeah. thing, isn't it? Precisely. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't see Roger jumping on the top of the Jeep and hanging on at that stage of the game um, either. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. It's the natural circle of life, as Bond would say in Skyfall. But yeah, uh, but yeah. Faster. So yeah, <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed he would. Yeah, um, cool. All right then. So before we get cracking, Chris, um, I need yes. to uh, put a message out to the people to come follow us on the social medias. So do that, please. Come and join us on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Just put James Bond Radio into the search box. You can find us on Instagram, James Bond Podcast over on Instagram. Um, good old B Dobbs is over there posting w- w- wonderful photos every single day of the week. So uh, make sure you come follow us over there. Um, and also you can come to James. On radio.com and you can leave us a voicemail on there press the send voicemail button on the far right of the screen you can send us a quote you can send us a question you can just say hello 
or whatever you want to do, <laughs> sing us a song. Um, you can come do that through the website. And of course, there's the donate button over there as well. If you want to help keep the good ship JBR afloat, that's always appreciated, never expected. But if you want to, you know, send a few grand our way just for the sake of it, we, we'll take it. We'll happily take it. <laughs> All right. Just putting that out there for yeah. any, any wealthy yeah. JBR <laughs> listeners. That would be nice. <laughs> anyway, we have a uh, yes. listener trivia question, don't we, Chris? We do indeed. Um, just before we go on to that trivia question, just another shout out. 90 second reviews, guys. GoldenEye, this is your chance to have your say. Mm. All you get is 90 seconds or less. So if you love it, you hate it, somewhere in between, we want to hear from you, especially if you haven't left a, a, a 90 second review before. We yeah. want to hear from everyone out there. Obviously, everyone that has before, we want to hear from you again. And uh, all you have to do, jamesbornradio.com, send a voicemail button on the right of the page, click it, and leave us your review absolutely what a time i should have mentioned that shouldn't i so well remembered yeah absolutely you use that voicemail button to leave your 90 second review um, i'm particularly excited to, uh, to hear dan gale's review of golden eye because they're always entertaining Ooh. so I, I i think if i remember correctly i think he didn't get one in in time for license to kill so i i might be wrong there but i have a, i have a vague memory that that one didn't didn't happen for whatever reason no. so i'm looking forward to to dan's thoughts on on golden eye because i know he's a timmy lover but i'm not so sure about his yeah. feelings about pierce so that'll be quite Ooh, interesting to okay. uh, to hear yeah that'll be good all right Definitely. good stuff okay so on to today's uh new listener trivia we have a question from mr steve oxenrider let's have a listen good morning listeners of james bond radio this is steve oxenrider from arlington virginia in the United States. My trivia question is, which four consecutive Bond films feature a reptile? Which four consecutive Bond films feature a reptile? I think I've got that. Hmm. Yeah, you know what I think I might do? Yeah. There was the film, there was a film that jumped out straight away, yeah. but I don't think that one is the one of the four. And then there were the four back to back, I think. I think I think I've got it. well yeah I think I'm sure we're probably thinking the same thing yeah yeah okay oh, but, oh, but that's a oh maybe I am I don't know actually there's this five got in mind and I'm just thinking one in the middle I'm not sure if that does yeah. have one but there's another potential sequence that have just jumped into my all right cool well we'll find out okay before good the question end of today's, though. that is a good question, question absolutely Steve. yeah I remember there, do you remember question. that old one that came in ages ago that, that was uh how, which Bond films featured a dog and then there was a whole flurry of his social media flurry. Well, there's that one in Thunderball having a wee against the ball, yeah, and then yeah. blah blah blah. It's uh, it's a funny old world, isn't it? Yeah. What, what we as Bond it fans find entertaining. But uh, all right yeah. then, Chris. I'm sure you're very excited. It's time to talk about Golden Knight. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's do it. Who are you? My name's Bond. James Bond. Bond. James. Bond. What do you think you're doing? All right then, Chris. So remind me, where where yes. did we leave things last time? What was the last thing we talked about? Where did we leave good old 007? Okay, so last time we saw Pierce was obviously the tank chase, which is one of the killer mm. scenes in the whole film. Like completely, it's just brilliant that whole scene. I loved it. Obviously, we had the little tie adjustment after the uh, <laughs> uh, after he saw. He does a few spins in the tank. You know, he's almost drifting in the tank, power sliding, yeah. which is great. Um, and he gets to the point where basically uh, the police cars go into the back of the tank, and he does his little adjustment and drives off. So, next scene we open up on Tom is around Trevelyan's train. So we basically see Urimov dragging Natalia uh, onto Trevelyan's armoured train. Now, this thing looks strange, doesn't it? It's almost like got a face in front of it, mm. you know, with a long sort of pointed nose. And it looks it's just, a bit it's like It's an those, interesting looking vehicle. It is. It looks a bit like those statues on Easter Island, isn't it? Those like ancient statues. Ooh, it that does. It's that sort of vibe, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Completely, completely. But I think it's kind of cool because obviously we mentioned early on, uh, I think it was... Um, Sukovsky mentioned that, you know, uh, Trevelyan lived on an armoured train. And again, we haven't, although we've seen a lot of trains in Bond, we haven't had anyone who's lived on one, yeah. kind of. I suppose Octopus, he had the circus sort of thing. But, you know, this is like he's kind of 
almost traveling base type thing. Yeah, a bit yeah. like um, Tiger Tanaka, I suppose. In a, I suppose in it a is, yeah, time. absolutely. Um, so basically, Bond rocks up in the tank and he sort of sees Oromov and, uh, and, and Xena comes out as they take Natalia onto, uh, onto the train. Now, this is a part where Trevelyan kind of gets his chance to do a bit of the um, a bit of the go with the ladies, you know. Mm. He sort of ha- tries on a bit with Natalia, doesn't he? Like, and uh, and and uh, sort of forces himself on her with a bit of bit of bit of a kiss here and there Absolutely. and stuff like that, which is quite interesting. Obviously, she gives him a slap. She certainly and does. So, um, so this is quite cool. So basically, at this moment in time, Trevelyan thinks everything's fine and dandy. You know, he as far as he's concerned, everything's all good. Um, and then it gets to the point where basically they see Bond is uh, like ahead of them in the tank in this tunnel, um, uh, which obviously the train is steaming towards. Mm. And uh, and uh, yeah, basically, what, what? So, what do you think about this? And obviously, this is quite one of those interesting sort of chicken situations whereby you know Trevelyan could ask the train to stop, and he's like, no, 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 ram him and stuff like that. Yeah. Well. I, if I, you know, it's like the old questions of like who would win in a fight between a tiger and a shark or something, isn't there? And I, Ooh, I would, yeah. I would prefer to be in the tank. I think. I think I'd feel safer in the yeah. tank. But at the same time, that train looks like it's built for war, doesn't it? It's not like getting yeah. on. A, it's armored. Yeah, really it's armored not like getting on the Hogwarts Express or something, is it? It's like <laughs> it looks like a beefy train that could quite yeah. happily ram anything out of its path. So, which I mean, I suppose it does, doesn't it? At the end of the day, it does ram the tank, you know, um, yeah. and kind of comes off maybe better for it. I would have thought. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's a funny old thing. I tell you what, this is right. This is one of those. This is where Trevelyan becomes very much more classic Bond villainy. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. when he, he's this is his mobile base. He's in there. He's got his henchwoman next to him. He's got the the damsel. You know, it's kind of like when Blofeld has Tracy, for example, up on Peace Gloria, and he's you know he's trying to romance her and stuff and all the rest of it. It's that, it. and you've got some good lines coming up. You know, why why don't you just be a good yeah. boy and die and all that kind of stuff. That's yeah. some he he really sort of steps things up a bit and becomes more like a classic yeah. Bond villain rather than you know the the dude who's got, like I, I wouldn't have said we've seen him in any real classic Bond villain scenarios yet it's all a bit like oh it's a bit smoke and mirrors at the moment you know we've just seen him come out yeah. with his scarred up face and stuff which is fair enough but we've never seen him like sitting in his control room and this is the first time we yeah. kind of see that and I, I, yes, I like it true. you know what I mean and 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 he's got that bit of power because obviously before they see Bond Oromov comes in with Natalia and he's like, Bond's escaped. And he, Trevelyan's just like, good for Bond, bad for you. Mm. And and like you can just see that he's, he's sort of emitting that bit of power, which we haven't perhaps uh, seen. It is classic. You do need a villain behind a desk or, or mm. some sort of thing, a bit like Sanchez in License to Kill. Yeah. It just... There's something about that which just sort of screams. You do need a, a bit of power, a villainous base to go with your villain. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like we've yeah. talked about in previous episodes where you couldn't really have a skint Bond villain. It just wouldn't feel right, would it? Do you know what I mean? If he's no. if he's a bit <laughs> strapped for cat, uh, though, I suppose you could say Le Chief was pretty skint, and that was his whole <laughs> well, motivation. Well, yeah, actually, he was but, incredibly yeah. skint. Yeah, but, the, uh, but yeah, you need you need your Bond villain to have your base and resources, you know. And it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 kind of cool. So. He rams the tank. Obviously, Bond shoots the yeah. train with the with the thing on the front of the tank, which was which, uh, which was strange because that didn't actually do much, did it? Um, equally, there was one thing I just want to point out. Yeah, it's a bit on. of a minor thing, but okay. So when Bond turns up in the tank and he sees them going onto the train, the train starts pulling away. Then we get a bit of the scene with with um, Oromov uh, and, and Trevelyan and Natalia and uh, and Xenia, mm. and then suddenly Bond's ahead of them in the tunnel. So I'm not sure how quick that tank must have been to get from well, from when the train left to like from what I learned last time, Chris, they go a lot quicker than yeah. than, uh, than they perhaps you, think, you might think. Yeah. yeah, so you know that is true. Yeah. That is very true. Yeah, um, but yeah, so this is interesting. So he obviously fires a shot at the tank, hits the train, and there's flames all over it. But it hasn't, you know, it hasn't derailed derailed it or whatever. Even though I think Xenia was kind of she was on very that excited to about by that, the sound of it, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. But that is a good shot when um, the train steaming towards the tank, a bond just gets out in time, and the tank is pretty much obliterated mm. when the train smacks into it, isn't it? Completely, like um, obviously the people inside get 
um, you know, the, sh- the the vibrations sort of send them to the floor and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I, I think you know, it must be cool said. Some uh, some uh, more another shout out to the top draw model work in this one as well. Oh, Derek Meddings. Like, yeah. there's a lot of uh, a lot. Of, again, like the more I I kind of go through this film and the more I watch it the more I'm kind of looking out for those models and, and there are certain scenes that I know are models, but yeah. I look at them and I'm like, I, I can't tell the difference. And there's like, like there's the shot of the tank looming out of the tunnel a little bit when you first kind of yeah, see where it is. Nice. That's a model yeah. shot. And it's like, is it's, it really? Yeah. Yeah. You would never think oh, it was a brilliant yeah, shot. It's, yeah. It's, really uh, like it's cool, man. It's, it's very good. So as you, as you rewatch it at home, everybody make sure you keep your eyes peeled for those model yeah. moments. Cause they are, it is yeah. a bit of mind blowing how how he pulls them off. Like some of them, obviously you yeah. can tell, but like you know, a, yeah. a lot of them, yeah, you, yeah. you'd be surprised that they're not actually the real thing. No, and then we get a quite a cool little standoff moment, don't we? So basically, yeah. Natalia tries to escape, and Oromov grabs her, and um, before uh, Trevelyan and Xenia sort of come to Bond, sort of has the gun and he has them up. So you've got on one side, you've got um, Trevelyan and Xenia. Bond in the middle with his gun, and then on the other side, you've got Urumov with a gun to Natalia's head. So this is quite a cool little moment now, because obviously Bond, if he shoots Trevelyan, then Urumov would shoot Natalia and so on. But then Bond sort of mentions to Urumov about um, Trevelyan being a Lienz Cossack and that he'll betray him and stuff like that. And you mm. can just see the, the cogs turning in Urumov just kind of going, well, hang on a minute. I didn't know that, you know, yeah. this this might not be as, as, we might not be as tight as I thought we were sort of thing. And Trevelyan's like, oh, that's in the past, you know, uh, we're, we're mates and all that sort of thing. Um, but I, what I love is there's a moment where Trevelyan basically says, um, so, you know, you've only got enough time for one shot. And as he says it, Zinnia's face when she looks at him, she's almost challenging him to shoot them, <laughs> to have a go. She like, she, I just love Zinnia. She's yeah. just so good. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, but then obviously, uh, like, um, Trevelyan tells Oromov to shoot. Bond quickly turns and shoots Oromov, but the other two then get away. They escape in their little helicopter, don't they? And basically tell Bond that he set the timers for the same six minutes that he gave him. And I think that's a nice little sort of callback to the start. Absolutely. Now, I tell you what, that's like, that's the end of Oromov, isn't it? For for a a, a character that features Mm. very heavily throughout the first part of this film. He has a very quick kind of send off, isn't it? They don't make any sort of fuss about it. Yeah. It's not like, oh no, there's, there's no a room killer dead. pun or anything like that. You either. could almost blink and miss that moment, couldn't you? And then that's it. Game over yeah. for a room of. He's never sort of he never comes yeah. up again after that. So uh, that's no, that's a funny that's a good one. Point. But uh, but yeah, so obviously you've got uh, you've got uh, the the sh- the scene shifts to you know escape mode. You've got Bond trying to cut a hole through the floor with his laser watch, which is nice. How do you feel about the laser watch? Now, do you feel like that is a gadget of its time of the nineties? Do you think if Daniel rocked out a laser watch, how would that make you feel these days? Well, I've seen quite a few because obviously they had one back in Never Say Never Again, um, way back then. Obviously, quite a few of the Brosnan ones. Well. I think two of them had lasers, didn't they? Because Die Another Day one had a laser as well, I think. And uh, yeah, I think lasers is one of those things where um, I don't know. We've we've seen it quite a lot in the past. Mm. Um, I guess if if I guess there'd have to be some something different about it. I don't know how you could make a laser different, but there'd have to be something. Uh, you know, not just an ordinary laser because, well, we've seen it, you know, we want something a bit more original maybe. You know what? Lasers are cool though. They're still cool. I yeah. still find those little pointers, like laser pointers, very entertaining. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, d- I don't know what it is yeah. about them. They just are. In the same way that lightsabers will always oh. be cool, no matter how oh, good yeah. or bad laser technology is, they're always going to be cool. Yeah. And I think there's always that that thing. And like we've, we've discussed at length before about how do you – give bond gadgets in this day and age because it's so easy to be cheesy and like a bit like bit slapstick tongue and cheeky whereas especially in yeah. daniel's world of course they've toned it way down a gun and a radio it's not exactly christmas you know they really kind of downplay mm. that side of things and when you consider like the phone in tomorrow never dies in 1997 yeah that would have been the coolest thing ever to have a phone that could do all that but now we have phones that that are way more powerful than that phone that Brosnan would have had in 97. So it's not cool anymore. You don't want to see Bond bring out his iPhone and start diddling around because we're all doing that every day. You need the things that are infinitely cool forever 
is those classic spy things like a, a book that you open and it's hollowed out and there's a little secret compartment. That's mm-hmm. always going to be cool no matter what technology is doing. You know what I mean? It's, like, it's infinitely cool. Yeah. And I think lasers do come into that, man. If, if I had yeah. some kind of laser thing, I would be shooting things with yeah. it all the time. But... <laughs> They are also a little bit sci-fi, aren't they? So it's kind of like yeah. you, there is a there well, is a, a balance there to be had, I think. Yeah, th- think of the old um, the living daylights car chase, your lasers in the hubcaps. Mm. You know, I thought that was brilliant, absolutely superb. I think Bond having a laser might be all right, but maybe just not in a watch because we've seen it a few times. So maybe mm. he has. Uh, you know, glasses, sunglasses that emit a laser. So I don't know, but just something that a little bit different. That's not not yeah. always to watch would be something. Yeah, which, absolutely. Because I guess Daniel, obviously, Daniel's had um, none of his watches have had gadgets, have they? In, well, the in watch films, inspector apart did, from the of most course. recent one, yeah. Inspector. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, obviously, um, <laughs> As time flies. Yeah. Indeed. I saw, I saw you catch that thought in your head and then end your sentence as, he, as, as you were saying it to be like, oh, I'm from the watch inspector. Yeah, very nice. Cool. Yes. So, um, yeah, cutting through the floor. Natalia leaps into action. I'm very impressed because I feel like a lesser Bond girl would, yes, would be like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And just sort of panic on the floor. She's not, she's not going to do that. She's going to get on the computer. She's going to start doing her thing. Um, as we discussed yeah. last time, Boris's password, a little bit on the insecure side. I feel like even signing up for a Yahoo account even wouldn't let you use that password these days. They'd say, we need a couple of capitals and a number or two <laughs> in there. But, uh, but yeah, those, those were the days, I guess. Yeah. Um, so there we are. So we, we have that thing where she's, she wants to see on the computer screen where he's located. She's like reverse. She's spiking. Yeah, she spikes she him. She spikes doesn't she? him, doesn't she? Which obviously we've, we've had that foundation yeah. laid at the beginning of the film when she's sitting next to Boris at, at the Seven Eye facility. So we've had that little seed laid down there earlier and, and obviously it's coming back to haunt Boris a little bit. Um, so there we go. Then they, uh, so they know he's somewhere in, uh, in the, in, in Cuba or in the Caribbean, I should say, go through the bottom of the train. Out they go. Last minute explosion, which has to be said, that is the Brosler and, and, uh, and, 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 What's her name? Not Natalia. It is Natalia in the film, but uh, Isabella. Is- Isabella. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, that is actually yes. them running away from the explosion, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it totally is. And uh, doing that little dive. And it's a great shot as well with the, with the train obviously blown up in the background. I think it's a really cool little scene, that one. Um, and then following that, they have that little chat and uh, do you destroy every vehicle you get into and all that sort of stuff going yeah. on. And um, yeah, so, so okay, here's an interesting question. So obviously Bond says... Um, you know, uh, uh, he only pays him lip service and they start macking out. Do you think they went the whole hog there and then yeah. beside the train tracks? <laughs> it's a tough one. I, I feel, so this is the seed yeah. of, of the, of the romance, isn't it? That's the first time we see that kind of connection yeah. to them. Cause obviously there's that line before where, where Trevelyan's trying to bait him and say, you know, tastes like strawberries. And he's like, I wouldn't know. And of course at that point he wouldn't yeah. know because that's, that's yeah. not happened yet. This no. time, obviously that's the first, you know, little hint of it. Um, I would say if they did, they'd have probably just nipped into the tunnel a little bit to get the benefit of the darkness. You know, yeah, because you know, right there by a burning wreck, or, or wreck back onto the part, yeah, you know. Well, there might be part of the train which which is still okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like how you're getting your personal priorities in order there. Okay, <laughs> so next up, then we we immediately arrive in the Caribbean. That was a very quick journey, wasn't it? We just uh, we blink and we're in the Caribbean all of a sudden. Um, and we have the very brief look at the BMW Z3. Now, I've since learned, Chris. I've learned why we don't see much of the BMW. Would you like to know why? Oh. Um, I certainly was, yeah. The reason is, is that the BMW deal only happened very late in the day. So they'd already had the script. They'd already had it all locked down when that happened. So they just didn't have room for a car chase. Now, I suppose you could say, well, why didn't you write a car chase in there and then just like, you know, I suppose you don't need to have that exact make and model. But apparently that's the reason that they give is just that they didn't have the exact car locked down. So they just didn't write a scene for it. What do you think about that statement? Do you think that's fair enough? Or are you like, come on, that's a bit of an excuse. That's, well, you know, I think you could have come up with something a bit more than than what they had because, yeah, I don't know. I still, I'm still not happy that we don't really see any of the gadgets. You know, I've, obviously they have that little radar thing, but that's about it. So it's a bit of a shame, really. I would have liked to have seen more, but I guess there is logic behind it in that case. But then that's that just shows it's purely 
a marketing ploy of having it in the film and then literally nothing else. Mm. And I know they're obviously being paid for it and that's fine, but I think they should have, it's a shame it didn't get locked down. I suppose it was like only, you know, it was coming up to when it was being released and stuff like that. So it was brand new and, uh, and I guess, yeah, they saw it like the look of it and thought, right, we've got to have it. Yeah. um, Yeah. There we go. All right, there we go. So there we have it. Bond and Natalia cruising along in the in the Z3. Wade lands his plane to give him a little package from Q. Do you, do you know what's in that package? Do you know what the... Because we never really get told, I, do we? I was thinking about it. Yeah, I was thinking about it. And I think it must be those, you know, those magnetic mines that he uses um, inside Trevelyan's base yeah. with those little lights around it. I'm, I'm guessing... He's got those in the, in the package. I, I couldn't because I couldn't, he's already got his watch. He's already got his pen. Mm. So I'm guessing it's probably those mines and maybe one or two other things. But I can't think what else. Makes a lot of sense. Of I suppose. I wonder if they gave him some Would, suction cups as yeah. well. You know, like like old times. But yeah. I tell you what, though, man. Oh, I, t- I tell you what's funny is those those little limpet mines are clear as day to me. I have a very clear memory of these. They're made out of the base of an old joystick, right? Like the 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 joysticks oh, you would yeah. use on home computers back in the nineties. So in in our house, it would have been the Amiga five hundred, the Commodore yeah. Amiga, and the joysticks you used to get for those already nice. had the little suction things on the bottom because you were meant to like stick them on the table in front of you, and then that would be like a solid base for it, and then you'd use the joystick to play a computer game. And it is literally those limpet mines are the exact base of the joystick I used to have as a kid, just with the actual joystick bit taken off and some shiny <laughs> lights put on, some blinking lights. Isn't wow. that cool? That's that's pretty interesting yeah. yeah it's quite good how they've sort of done that it's a bit like the old um yeah they do that with a few of the props like the old moonraker laser gun isn't isn't that like some toilet piping or something <laughs> no it's not really that but you know it's stuff like that, that well, that's what we were saying about practical effects man <laughs> um, is, is making genius use of, of uh, thinking outside yeah. the box with stuff yeah i fully support that yeah well uh, there was actually something i noticed about this scene um which i thought i'd i'd bring up because it might not be true but i think there's there's something in it so basically there's a little line where um bond is speaking to wade and um wade tells bond that he borrowed the plane from a friend of his at the dea Mm. now i think that this is a subtle reference to license to kill because the plane that he uses is exactly the same plane that Sanchez is in in the pre-title sequence of License to Kill, you know, where they get caught by the helicopter. Well, it's not the exact plane because the reference number is different, but the same make and model right, yeah, as yeah. the one from License to Kill. So I'm pretty sure that's a subtle reference to, to Bo, you know, the DA obviously took oh. that plane and uh, and... Yeah, I think it might be. I like I that. I'm, what do you think? I'm going with that, man. I'm going with that because that's that's a that's a lovely yeah. touch if that's the case. Yeah, I suppose you'd have to be super, yeah. super continuity to get the tail number right. But uh, do, tell me how you know that's different. Did you yeah. go and compare the two films just to look at the tail number? Well, I remembered they looked very similar and then I looked at images uh, to see and, and then I realised it was the same make and model plane and then I just, yeah, did a little bit of research. Nice. Wouldn't that be lovely? It, that, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm choosing to go with that, man, that, that yeah. Sanchez's plane that he uh, he rocks up yeah. in. Yeah, all right, absolutely. me too. Right, very nice. Um, yeah, the, 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 the plane is, I'll tell you, the plane is a Cessna 172P Skyhawk. Very nice. All right, cool stuff. There you go. So, uh, so there we go then. So uh, Wade drops off his little package he gets to drive the the z3 away don't push any buttons in there um and that's the last we see of jack yeah. wade as well isn't it that's that's bye bye jack for a while well, yeah there's a there's that nice little bit though when uh he's a bit suspicious of natalia because she she's aware of the football dish that 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 us have got in uh in new zealand and he's like oh have you have you checked her out on like head to toe and so that sort of reinforces the fact that they they sort of had a good old session absolutely um, by the beside the train tracks <laughs> yes absolutely yeah very nice indeed um so there we have it obviously wade comes back at the very end but uh but yeah we we say goodbye to him for the moment and then what we have chris next up is we have a little sort of uh, i would call it a romantic scene but it's more natalia coming and having a go at bond isn't it which I think yeah. is a bit of an odd thing because let's look at what they've been through together, right? She's obviously on board with let's let's go and sort this out. That's why she wanted to look at yeah. to find well, out she, where Boris is. She wants revenge for the yeah. whole Seven Eye thing. 
this is it. She said to Bond, um, uh, for, for, cause we're going to Cuba. And Bond was like, what do you mean we? And she's like, well, do you know how to disarm the weapon? So she's obviously she's keen to get out there fully and on get board. it done, isn't she? Indeed. But then Bond's having a little moment on the beach. He's just having a little sit down. Yeah. And along she comes and just yeah. starts having a go at him. What, now, what do you think her motivation is there? It's a bit of a strange one, isn't it, really? Um, it's all right, Natalia. Setting- Jesus. I thought we were in yeah. this together. <laughs> It is a little bit of that, isn't it? Because the setting's quite nice. He's on he's on that Caribbean beach. But, but yeah, Bond's just having chill time, just staring out to see his knee. Natalia mm-hmm. comes over. And initially, I think, well, she starts having a go saying, oh, you know, him and Trevelyan trying to kill each other and, and all that sort of stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. It does get pretty heavy. Um, and, uh, yeah, it is, it is a bit... I, in fact, this is one of the scenes that I do think is a little bit strange. Mm. And I don't know why. It it does... It feels a bit odd. What like, do you not think this scene does? Not necessarily in a bad way. What do you think this scene does? Well, it, well, there's the line, oh, how can you be so cold? And Bond's like, it's what keeps me alive. No, it's what keeps you alone. And that's really nice. So you're getting mm. a bit of, you know, from Bond, obviously you're finding out that... He, he can be so unemotional, so sort of, you know, well, so cold because that's what he needs to do his job. And and so you get that from him. But then equally, Natalia, in Natalia's response, it's like, well, you know, you're never going to end up in a proper relationship if you're going to be like that the whole yeah. time. Um, obviously, uh, he he doesn't, as, as we know. Um, well, not not often anyway. So um, I think you're getting a nice bit of Bond sort of uh, uh, character within these lines. Again, the dialogue is good here. Um, so I think it, it's just trying to uh, it's trying to sort of ramp up a bit between the Bond and Trevelyan bit. But I think it's mainly getting the fact that Bond is that lone shark. I suppose and, and, it's uh, not a lone shark. It's a, I should say. It's, yeah, there's a different. But, there's a different reason. Yeah, I suppose it's it's like a character building thing. Let's look at the the character of Bond a little bit. Let's have a a little bit of a a session and learn about him and the way he thinks a little bit. I suppose. But yeah, I I'm just every time I see that, yeah. I'm just a bit taken aback at how all of a sudden Natalie's got the ump with him when when they're sort of fully on board together mm. on this mission. It just seems a bit funny that she'd come up and just start having a go. But yeah. uh, you know, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, is a bit. But, uh, but then they end up uh, macking out and ending up in this beach hut, getting it on together. So Brosnan obviously, or Bond obviously, said the right thing to uh, to a pizza. Of course he did. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> but, nice. But that's a nice little touch. And uh, and then so they've had their their pre mission coitus. That's done and dusted now. We can we can chalk yeah. that up to another one done. And then uh, it's time to go and have a little explore and find the villainous base. Now, Chris, what yes. do we have here? We have yes. Bond and Natalia in a plane flying around Cuba. They say, oh, we don't know where it is. We can't find anything. There's no dish anywhere. What's going on? We'll have to call it a day. But then, obviously, we get a missile yeah. come out of the water, shoot down the plane. Now, do you think that was the wrong move? Because if they hadn't shot the missile, they'd have just gone home. And that would have been it. Yeah, a hundred percent the wrong move. That's like get, giving the game away. It's yeah. like so stupid. It's like come on, yeah. Trevelyan, what are you doing? I know Bond's there, and it's tempting to swat him like a fly, mm. but just let him be, yeah. and you'll have your your millions. You know, London will be screwed. Yeah. The, you know, economy, the whole computer system. Let, you know, just let him go, and everything would be fine and dandy. I think if there was one mistake you could you could pin on on Trevelyan that that for the whole thing, it was choosing to shoot that missile. Maybe it wasn't his choice. Maybe it was a minion downstairs yeah. that was like playing. I'm going to press the button. But perhaps that, actually, yeah, but that's true. That, perhaps that, that was an error, case. wasn't it? When you're completely invisible. Yeah. Why would you give the game away? I don't know. But so this leads me on to yeah. another point, right? Yeah. We were talking about Trevelyan in his yeah. little command room on the train. He got all that. That's nice. We see him be like a proper Bond villain for a bit and, and, and drop some cool lines. Now, this to me, this satellite base, this dish base, I think yeah. f- quite literally flies under the radar, Chris. And I'll tell you why. Because let's look, <laughs> at, let's look at the history of Bond villainous bases. We've got a hollowed out volcano. For example, we've got a crater base in the most recent one. You know, we have all of these like classic villainous bases. And I think this one doesn't get the same level of appreciation that those ones do. Obviously, the volcano is like an all time 
world beating classic. Everybody remembers the volcano, but nobody seems to talk about this one yeah. very much. And I feel like, hold on a minute, let's look at what happens. No. Obviously, there's a big lake, it drains away, massive satellite dish comes out of it, you know, controlling the golden eye satellite and all that stuff. Like, it doesn't get more like grandiose Bond villain than that, does it? It's, I mean, that, to me, that's that's on an, on an even no. sort of level with the volcano in terms of villainy, you know? So why do you think this one doesn't get the kudos that something like the crater base or or the or the well not the crater base sorry the the volcano does yeah yeah i think the externally i think it's great i think that idea of of the lake draining and then the dish and then obviously the antenna coming out i think that is fab and and i think people do potentially talk about that maybe not as much as some of the ones you mentioned but i think the interior might be lacking in terms of there's Obviously, it hasn't got a Ken Adam element to it yeah. for, for obvious reasons. But you know, you've got you, you got the computers, you got the 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 leaky canisters, you got you got the soldiers, the guards, you got a map of the world, which obviously is you know uh, is a must with the Bond villain space. But in all honesty, it's not that eye popping a, a, a HQ in terms of the interior. I think the exterior is brilliant. You know that under the lake and stuff. Mm. And I think inside, it's just, it, you know, you look at inside that volcano crayon, and it's one of the best sort of looking things you've ever mm. seen. And uh, and I just don't think the Golden Eye interior base can stand up to it because of that. Um, but I do think the exterior is, is, is on it. You know, the exterior is great. You see, I, 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 that idea anyway. I'm in full agreement there. Like out, outwardly, I suppose at the end of the day, the exterior is a real thing, isn't it? That dish is actually there in, in Puerto yeah. Rico, isn't it? And it's, you know, they use it to try and yeah. find aliens, don't they? Bless them. Um, so that is a that is a stunning <laughs> feat, of, <laughs> feat of engineering over there. You know, that's that's an amazing thing to look at, you know. Um, yeah. And the inside almost doesn't look like it would be in that place. It looks mm. it looks different, doesn't it? It, it, it kind of doesn't look like it would be underneath that thing. And I feel no. like what what, in my mind, if Ken Adam had done this, he'd have used the bowl as almost like the roof. Exactly. He'd use that as a center set piece. And in my mind, I, I close my eyes and I see this massive yeah. sort of like hanger thing down there with with a yeah. dipping ceiling that is the bottom of the bowl and like projected exactly. onto that bowl would be the world map or something like that. It would almost yeah. be like a giant yeah. projector screen or something on the bottom of the bowl yeah. to simulate the world or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like you could have definitely done more with that. It's it's a very nineties looking base, isn't it? You know, it's it almost looks yeah. like it's been. It's designed, a bit generic. Isn't yeah, it? it almost looks like it's been d designed for a video game, doesn't it? With all the the, the it, carefully placed uh, like gas canisters that you could shoot and it'll explode yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I, I get it. I think I, I think that's probably the the downfall of it. Ex externally, I think it's it's brilliant. The concept of draining the lake and it coming out and it being this hidden thing that's very much like the volcano, isn't it? It really is. It's the, it's yeah, the yeah. same idea, you know, hiding beneath a, a lake instead of underneath the, the volcano. Um, but I th yeah, for me, that's where it, it falls down as well is the interior. It just doesn't look like yeah. it's the same place. No, exactly. No, but I really like your idea there. That, that's a hundred percent. I would have had like a, a vertical, uh, you know, wall, maybe a circular room, vertical wall, and then and then it sort of angled upwards, as in the shape of the bowl, sort of yeah. thing from the center. And that would have, yeah, that would have looked cool. But um, just just go back a bit. I guess we uh, went off on a tangent a little bit. <laughs> so basically, Bond and Natalia on the plane get hit by the missile obviously um that's not great the plane comes in and it crash lands in the jungle and we get that classic bond thing where the where the plane's wings get sheared off that seems to happen in quite a few of the films it certainly does um now this is quite interesting so they obviously it's it's been a pretty bad crash and so bond helps Natalia out and literally as soon as they get out of the airplane they're pretty much both collapse and like pass out mm. so it's obviously been a, a pretty hard thing and then you get that moment where um Bond is kind of coming to, and and you can see that like the whirring blades of the helicopter, and there's that little music cue just playing, and he's not quite sure what's going on, and then you see Xenia sort of jump out of the helicopter, abseiling down, and he just about stands up as she sort of comes down, and then boots him one, 
And and we haven't, I would, in terms of the whole thing of Bond being passed out and coming to, that is quite a nice little bit, isn't it? Do you think? Do you like that? Yeah, it's quite trippy, isn't it? It's, uh, it's yeah, it yeah, is. It is that, I'm trying to think which Bond film it is now, but there's... It's I'm, a bit Vietnam-esque, isn't it? It very much is. So there's 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 a scene in particular I'm thinking of, I can't remember which film it's from now, where he's he's he gets knocked out and he kind of wakes up. Is it Majesties after he wakes up on Blow? Majesties Coast in the bed. I think maybe that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. But yeah, yeah. I kind of yeah, I kind of yeah, like yeah. that. It's uh, this this is a, a is a scene I remember reading about back in the day because that was Eunice, wasn't it? Old Eunice Hart Hart. Shout out to Eunice yeah. sliding down yeah. the rope there. Um, and it, this was a tricky one with. I remember in the UK that fight was had to be edited, which you don't, which, yeah. which wasn't for the rest of the world, but for the UK, because we're sensitive selves, apparently. Um, the concept yeah. of the ladies having a fight was a bit much. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't the done thing, old boy. And the headbutt between yeah. Xenia and That's Natalia is, yeah. was cut out. The concept of the ladies headbutting. Um, now, the way... Which is a shame, because it looks so good when you watch it. It does look good, doesn't it? And it, it yeah, happens. Absolutely. Yeah. The way Xenia's got older like her, by the hair and stuff just before she cracks away, mm. almost looks like she's going to yeah. give her a kiss. And I I, I feel like yeah. that would have been nice. Let's throw that in there. Just a quick kiss. Then a headbutt. Oh, actually... That would have been a nice oh, touch to Xenia. that's brilliant. Yeah. That's such a good idea. Yeah, I mean... It, Why did it, they, or even licking her face and then headbutt. I wasn't saying two, it for just yeah. to in, improve the plot. I just uh, wanted to see that. Yeah. But... It does. Yeah. It does. No, double. But I, I, yeah. No, I really like it. That's a brilliant idea, Tom. They could have. Yeah. That's. Oh, why do they not do yeah, that? Absolutely. That's a shame, isn't it? That would have. That would have been a nice little bit. Indeed. But she really goes for it, doesn't mm. she? So she kicks Bond down, then kicks him when he's on the ground. Then I think Natalia comes to her and she swings a branch at her, doesn't she? She grabs a branch mm. and waits your turn, and then poof, nuts her one, and then. And then the next bit looks a bit weird to me. And I know they cut something out. So there's another bit of this fight that didn't make it into the finished film. And suddenly Bond sort of grabs her, uh, grabs a gun and then shoots a helicopter. Uh, it attaches the, that winch cable onto her, the abseil rope or whatever it is onto her, and then shoots a helicopter. Mm. And it almost happens a bit too... It's not very smooth, I don't think. From that moment that Natalia kind of nuts... Um, uh, Zini so nuts Natalia. Isabella. <laughs> yeah, Natalia. Uh, to Bond suddenly being there, grabbing it and hooking it on. I, it's, that bit isn't quite as smooth for me as, as I'd like. And I think that's because they cut another certain bit out of the fight. Um, but, but I think the the actual death is brilliant. So obviously he shoots the, the helicopter pilot. The helicopter sort of falls away bringing uh, Natalia right up, uh, bringing Xenia, sorry, right up yeah. against a tree and being squashed. And like we always say... Hoisted by her own petard. Absolutely, we like that, don't we? <laughs> yeah, no, it's very yeah, nice. Yeah. And now, t- talk to me about the quip. What do you think about the quip? Obviously, she always did enjoy a good squeeze. Now, do you think that's a oh fucking hell, or do you think that's a yeah bond? No, no, I th- I'm I'm with the latter on this one. I think the way that it's delivered is is Brosnan nails it. I think yeah. it's like cheeky. I mean, it is cheese. And it's on the line, but it doesn't cross over the line. Yeah. I think it's it's right on that acceptable line where it's cheese, but it works and and it fits so well, obviously, yeah. with with uh, Xenia's death and stuff. That I I'm more I'm happy for it's that one. one. What I, about you? I, th- I I do enjoy it. I thoroughly enjoy it, and it's one that it's not. Because it relates to her entire character. She her famous signature move is the squeezing of the thighs to kill people. Um, yeah. And that's featured throughout the whole film. And then obviously she gets hoist by her own petard at the end there, drops the line. I think it's perfect. And the delivery is perfect. And I would I would hasten to add on the other side of that coin, when we get a few movies down the line, one of them that makes me go, oh, for fuck's sake, is mm. pre-titles of Die Another Day, Saved by the Bell. No, mm. that one's just a bit too cheap and nasty. Do you know what I mean? That's that's. I remember yeah. wincing. I can I can I tell you that. loads from that film. I, I'm sure you can. Mr. Kill. Now there's a name to oh, die for. Don't oh, even stop it. Fucking hell. I, uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, yes. So yeah. there's there's probably yeah. more. It's been a long time. Um, but uh, yeah. but yeah. So that one for me lands right on the nose. I'm happy with that. Yeah, definitely. So basically, it gets to the point where um, one of the guards tells Trevelyan that Bond and Natalia are there, and they're like, "Right, go, go and kill him." Basically, and this is the point where they end up. Um, well, they see obviously the antenna coming out, don't they? And and uh, and the whole thing, and then the water draining. Now, I know a few people have 
it sort of mentioned the water draining looks a bit rubbish and stuff like that in terms of, you know, that reverse bit of the water. But it, it, I think it's all right. It's you know, certainly not, not a sort of crime. It. I mean, it's, it is, yeah. there's, there's, it's kind of obviously reversed, isn't it? Especially when yeah. you see it at the end where it kind of shoots up at the very bottom and then kind of, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. but oh, fucking hell, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Do you know what I mean? No, exactly. Yeah. And I do like the way that they slide down the dish. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. To to obviously they get shot uh, get shot at yeah. and then both of them slide I th- down. I believe that 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 was entryway. they actually at the real dish they actually slid down the bowl of that. That's how they shot that sequence. They actually oh, just wow. dive down well, the, what, with in a, the actual with dish with the camera. Yeah, in the actual one, which yeah, is pretty yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. wicked! Uh, that's cool. Yeah, definitely. So basically, that then w- within the center itself, within the HQ, Trevelyan tells Boris, right, this is the world's greatest cash card, and it better not be rejected. Obviously, it's a golden eye card sort mm. of thing. Um, and I, what I like actually, what I really like about this is the relationship between Trevelyan and Boris because they fucking hate each other. <laughs> they can't stand each other, yeah. but yet they're on the same team. Yeah. They're both villains. Obviously, Boris is a is a minor villain, and Trevelyan is the main villain. But the way that like Boris is like, no, I am not ready. And then he, and then Trevelyan's like, do it, sort of thing. And then there's a bit later on, um, which we'll come to where, um, well, I'll tell you now anyway, where Natalia sort of slaps Boris and he, he goes ape, but Trevelyan sort of is laughing at it, yeah. you know, just because he doesn't like Boris. And that's nice. And I don't know if we've had that before where you have two villains that really don't get on, but are in that close quarters. Maybe we have, but it, I think that elevates the Boris characters. Uh, uh, you know the level of Boris's character quite a lot. Just having that antagonism between yeah, the two. Yeah. Um, what, what do you like? That, what is, what's your thoughts? That on is those nice. Two? I I think because you the easy thing to do is just to have this henchman like Odd Job, for example, who's just has this undying loyalty to his boss, who is perfectly willing to lock himself in the vault with a nuclear bomb and go up for the cause of Goldfinger increasing the value of his gold. You know, it, yeah. and that's cool. That's fine. But in the, it's it's kind of yeah. cool. it's almost a bit like Bond and Q's relationship. That sort of like crusty sort of like is it, obviously it's different, but it's that kind of same thing where they're kind of uh, they're back and forth thing. You know, in the sense that Trevelyan knows he needs a hacker to get this job done, but he probably has a little bit of contempt for the fact that he's this little yes. computer monkey or whatever. You know what I mean? Whereas he's yeah. a double O. You know, he's got all these amazing skills and all the rest of it. Um, and I suppose it's the, it's the, it's a similar. And Boris thing. knows that as well, doesn't he? Indeed. Boris, and that's what he plays on. Yeah, yeah, like, completely. completely. But he knows he's needed, and that's how he gets away with it yeah. all. But uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's good. that's, like that that's very bit. nice. So what happens next, then, Chris? So basically, um, Boris, uh, Boris, uh, Trevelyan tells Boris the target is London, and uh, he, Boris starts sort of uh, repositioning the antenna, obviously to to aim for um, aim for the great capital. And I like that bit where obviously Trevelyan says, "God save the Queen," and that's a nice little moment. You know, mm. he's obviously. Uh, very anti-British, um, as we learned from his backstory. So basically, Bond and Natalia, they they break into the HQ and uh, they cause a distraction. Natalia says she needs to get to the mainframe. So Bond starts shooting some of the guards as Natalia gets away. And now this is a great moment. I know we might have mentioned this once or twice before. So he gets the mines. He puts these magnetic limpet mines on the wall. And as he's just going through it, there's a couple of, there's a few guards that are shooting him. And there's just a bullet that ricochets probably a couple of inches away from his head. And he just flicks it as if it's nothing. Yeah. And it's so cool, that, that moment. That is it's a like, very cool it, moment, isn't like, it? Yeah. yeah. Bro, he, bro, and the way that Brosnan does it, just kind of, oh, it's so blasé about it and while he's sort of setting the minds and stuff. I I think that bit is so good. It's like if you had a montage of, you know, really cool Bond moments where he does something you think, yeah, man. <laughs> I think that would be in that montage, yeah. just that little bit. Yeah. I think it's so good. I'll give you that. That um, is a, that is a yeah. wicked moment, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then basically, so he plants, plants some mines, but then he um, gives himself up. So he slides his, uh, he slides his uh, PPK across the floor, his gun across the floor, and then he comes out with his hands up. All, all of this is kind of distraction tactics. So Natalia can get on the mainframe and she starts to um, basically change Boris's you know, change the access codes and change the antenna and stuff mm. like that, isn't it? Um, 
yeah, so then basically this is a part where Trevelyan obviously sees Bond and he's like, you know, he, he basically goes through his stuff, asks for his watch and talks about Q and, you know, and he presses the button on Bond's watch, doesn't he, which stops the mind. I do like think, that. Oh, I fuck. really like that. He's like, how is old Q? Still yeah. press here, do I? And yeah. he knows exactly. Like yeah. it, it, That, to me, fires off a whole different run of films where, like, what yeah. were Trevelyan's adventures? What was his relationship yeah. with him like? Do you know what I mean? Did, and did, Q. Uh, and Thank you, obviously. But like, you yeah. know, you, you almost picture like, because we've seen so many scenes where Bond goes into M's office and sits there and, you know, here's what you're going after. It makes you think that Trevelyan would have done the same thing, wouldn't he? He'd have gone into that yeah. office. He'd have probably Robert Brown's M, because nine years before, you yeah. know, Robert this Brown's M yeah, would have sat definitely. across from him and told him what he wanted him to do and off he'd have gone and done his mission. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it is cool. It, isn't yeah, it, it is, it is cool. cool. And that's, cool. that's such a unique thing because we've never had any other villains. I suppose, Silver might be the closest. Silver's, yeah, exactly. But yeah, he wasn't yeah. a double O. It wasn't the same thing. It's not like he'd have been popping into Q Branch to get his gadgets and stuff and sitting mm-hmm. directly across from him. So it's it's quite a unique thing that, and I do I do like that. And it's that same thing as well in the sense. Do you remember how we said um, in Doctor No how there's that cool moment where uh, Doctor No is like, um, uh, sorry, where Bond says like minute. Min- uh, Start again, Tommy. Where Doctor No <laughs> comes in and says, One million dollars, Mr. Bond. Oh, yeah. You were wondering what it costs. As a matter of fact, I was. And it's yeah. like, it just shows that. Was, was Do- Roger in that film? <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> he was, um, in my mind, anyway. And so you've got that, and it just illustrates that Doctor No is that step ahead of Bond a little bit. He's, he's very yeah. canny. Yes. He's, he's, he's just that one and step And he does that throughout thinking. that scene as well, he doesn't he? Does. Like he's always ahead of him. Yeah. And that's really nice. And yeah, I think it's the same with Trevelyan in this in this particular moment. Obviously, yeah. he Bond had plans to blow up blow up the base, and now, and now Trevelyan's kind of stopped it, mm. or at least for the moment he's thwarted it, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, my eagle eyes spotted something, Ooh. which I thought is worth a little mention as well. So basically, Trevelyan's plan, his scheme, is, is to break into the Bank of England, transfer funds electronically, fire the golden eye, and then there's no trace of, of the hack. So it's basically a you know, computer hack to get his money. Now, when up on his screen... He, like the funds he's going to transfer it to, his bank, okay? Now, the name of Trevelyan's bank is... Is Pevsner, commas bank. Now we know about Pevsner, don't we? Oh, Tom in it, Tom Pevsner. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exact producer Tom Pevsner, and now Inspector Q stayed at the Pevsner Hotel, didn't he? He did indeed. Um, yeah, which is obviously uh, about the the main man again, Mr. Tom. Um, so I thought that's quite a cool little, quite a cool little in thing. But it's only on the screen, like not very long. Absolutely, so it's quite I a, do like little things yeah. like that. I'll tell you a story yeah. now. I remember when I was at school. And we had to, yeah. in English, this is like when I was th- probably 13, 14, and we had to write a story. It was like, okay, today we're going to write a story. And right. I knew that, right, because I'd seen GoldenEye so many times. I knew that right. it said Pevsner Commerce Bank, and I wrote a story about a bank robbery at the Pevsner Commerce Bank. Seriously? And then, yeah, I know, isn't that amazing? <laughs> and then, so I wrote this whole story about it. And then I I remember looking at all the names in the cre- you know at the bottom of a movie poster you got all the yeah, names of everybody yeah, involved yeah. kind of thing I I uh, I remember going home and looking at the poster and taking all the names of everybody along there and working them into my story in different ways oh, like it would be, I, I I didn't use the obvious one so I, I, if I remember no. rightly I didn't use like Brosnan in any way or anything no, no, it was no, like it no, was no. like the people that they were the big John yeah all that kind of thing yeah. so you know I I, yeah. I had the the Pevs and the Commerce Bank because I re- yeah. remember that from the film <sighs> and then who was the other one. I feel like it might have been. I th- I'm pretty sure I got Lindy Hemming in there. I think I, I named a street nice. after her, Hemingway. I think it was, but yeah, yeah whatever. But yeah, I, I, I yeah, it, Hemingway yeah. is a street. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's that's so, mate. Have you still got it? Oh fuck knows. No, that would that would have been long gone. So, but I, if Did I ever you, stumble across oh, that man, that will be a, a beautiful. I want to. I want to read it. I want to read. <laughs> I want. No, I want you to read it out for everyone. Oh my goodness. Did you? Do you remember if you got a good good grade on it? I can't remember. I can't remember. I, in my mind, oh. it was an it was an A, a plus. But yeah, yeah, I would have given you an A yeah, plus. Probably for that, a man. D in reality. Ima- imagine, right? Imagine if you're a teacher and you're a Bond fan, mm. and but you don't know that any of your class is into Bond, and suddenly you get a piece of work which is really Bond like. They're going to be your best people. You're going to be yeah. like, yeah, A star, A star, A star, A star. Yeah, A star. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember cool. spending a long time campaigning in English to read a Bond, and and oh, really? yeah, yeah, but they were never up for it because they, um, 
it was. I remember it's, we had, we had to read like To Kill a Mockingbird and all those books, yeah, which used yeah. to used to be like you know classics. But I'm not interested in reading To Kill yeah. a Mockingbird. Let me read some Bond or or, or some X Files, yeah. which was all the rage back in the day. I remember campaigning to read some X Files, but it never came off. It was all the old classics. Right. But uh, hey ho. Oh, if if they had said yes, you can we can read one Bond book. Back in the day, what would you have chosen? I think I would have chosen Majesties because I think that would, that's, Ooh, nice. that's got the most beef in there for discussion in in, in that yeah. sort of, you know, in a school setting, I think. Yeah. Cool. Or I just shocked yeah. them all Wicked. and did Live and Let Die, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Never again will we be reading Fleming at school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay, so then we get to the... Po- oh, yeah, there's another great bit between Boris and Trevelyan. So Bond basically tells Trevelyan he's nothing more than the bank robber a common thief Mm. and the way that Boris just looks at Trevelyan with that smirk on his face (laughs) again it's so nice man I love it um so the guards end up finding Natalia grab her but she just manages to like free a grip and and set everything in motion her encryption process and stuff like that um and then we get this oh mate there is one bit which I can't stand okay Okay, so it gets to the point where Trevelyan is speaking to Bond about his plan and how London's electronic system is going to go down and everything like this and there's a bit where he goes in 43 in 42 seconds or or whatever it is and it's like you absolute wanker if you hadn't bothered to turn your head it would have been exactly the same and it's like that for me oh that pisses me off I'm really sorry but that does piss me off in what way does it piss you off though does it just make you hate Trevelyan or is it in the writing of the script that annoys you it's a writing of the script that annoys right. me because it doesn't make sense because it would have been 43 if he carried on. Yeah. It's, it's just stupid. Yeah. Absolutely No, I'll give you that. Stupid. Yeah, I'll give you that. Like, I really don't like that line at all. Yeah. If it had been clever, then I would have gone for it. But it's just, it's not clever. It doesn't make sense and it's stupid. And yeah. it makes him a bit more, like, not as good, I think. All right, that's a, a, that's a fair shame. point. Anyway, yeah, absolutely. I, I yeah. agree with you there. But, but he follows it up with one of the best lines Definitely of the film, anyway. Go on in. Okay, so he says, I might as well ask if all the vodka martinis have silenced the screams of all the men you've killed, or if you've found forgiveness in the arms of all those willing women for all the dead ones you failed to protect. Now, how fucking good is that? That is brilliant. It's a isn't statement, it? isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And it how, how do you is. feel Bond takes that? He just kind of brushes it off, doesn't he, really? Yeah, I, I guess he does, doesn't he? I think, I think he probably. Got to him a little bit, though. I reckon on the inside, maybe that did, because obviously Natalia's there and there's a bit of the whole thing about the f- women who you fail pot- mm. to protect. And obviously that's the first time from Natalia's point of view that she's kind of thought, oh, hang on a minute, maybe I'm not as safe as I thought I might have yeah. been with this guy. Yeah. So there is that sort of side to it, um, which which I really like. And it kind of shows a bit more vulnerability to Bond's yeah. sort of character, which I think it, which I think is really good. And, you know, it's, it's also true. Trevelyan just prodding Bond a little bit. You know, he knows him so well. Yeah. He knows what, you know, he knows what makes him tick and he knows how to aggr- irritate him and stuff. Do you so know I think what, that's him. Do you just, know what that is? That's that's what? the kind of the other side of when Bond prods the bee's nest, isn't it? When he goes, exactly. you know, oh, I'd be lost exactly. at sea and tomorrow never dies. Yeah. Just to, you know, oh, I yeah. see a spectre Fly at your shoulder, casting. a spectre, a spectre yeah. of defeat and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. He's just prodding the thing. It, obviously it's a bit different, but it's the, it's the same yeah. kind of idea, isn't it? This time it's the villain yeah. prodding back, I think. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Which, I, which I think was great because we don't get that all too often. Um, okay, so then we get to the point where um, Natalia, uh, she, you know, Boris is, is, she sees Boris, doesn't she, for the first time and he's like, Natalia, as if they're still mates and she gives him a massive whack, yeah. which again, I think Trevelyan is, is quite keen on. Um, and then Boris, basically, he gets Bond's pen and starts clicking away, doesn't he? And now this moment, I think, is quite good in terms of how suspicious you know how tense it is because mm. you just zoom in on Bond's face, or you you have got a close up of Bond's face, and you can see he's counting like how many clicks is he doing. And I do admit that it is quite hard to follow yeah. because obviously three clicks arm it, three clicks disarms it, but sometimes he clicks four, sometimes he clicks two, yeah. sometimes he clicks five or whatever, and and you're trying to follow it like Bond is on screen. And uh, but it is a really good scene just just for the sort of how tense it is I think yeah what do you what's your what's your opinion on this that's a good one and I I do like how it's not just a uh, 
you know, just a, a gadget that's trotted out and used. It's kind of, yeah. it's not Bond using that gadget. It's not like he's like, okay, I'm going to make a distraction. Oh, I've got my penny, a tick, tick, tick. And then off he goes. Yeah. It's in the hands of somebody else who's out of his control. I, I really like the way they use it. Again, like we said last time, there's, there's the diss in Spectre, isn't there, about all oh, exploding pens. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, but I feel like, I feel like that's a classic Bondian gadget, man. And yeah. I, I like how it's used in the film. It's a very, it's a great moment of tension and it saves the day as well. Yeah, exactly. No, I think it's brilliant. And it's and it's also around the time when Natalia says, um, oh, kill him. He he means nothing to me. Yeah. Obviously, Bond said the same thing about Natalia. On, so it's a really nice, you know, she get, and but she knows that he obviously didn't mean it. Yeah. And, uh, and now she's using the same thing on him, which I think is really cool. So it gets to the point where Boris, he just goes crazy, like, tell me, Natalia. And then basically, he's obviously just clicked it, ready to arm the pen. And Bond basically whacks his arm, doesn't he? The pen flies, lands perfectly yeah. in like the contents of the leaking container, yeah, the nice. flammable leaking container, yeah. obviously. Bond was aiming for that, uh, as you were, um, and then obviously the you get a huge explosion, and the base it just turns into a bit of a fireball, doesn't it? You got like little explosions all over the place. I tell you what, I noticed last time I did it when he comes up and holds the pen in uh, Natalia's face when he's yeah. screaming at her. As he does that, you clearly hear it. You clear, Ooh, hear, clearly hear yeah, him do the yeah. three clicks, and that's how yeah. Bond knows. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was a nice little little touch. So I tell you what's what what uh, kind of raised a smile for me is obviously big explosion. They use yeah. their distraction to kind of run away and they jump in that lift, don't they? Yeah. And then when it yeah, opens so. at the top, Natalia's lying on the ground. Yeah, I thought. I wonder if he thought. Hold on a minute. I remember when I was in Goldfinger's prison, and then I hid above the door. And then when the guard came in to check, I jumped on him and got him. And that's how yeah. I said, I should do that again, you know. So, Natalia, yeah. you lie down. I'm going to hide up here and I'll wait for the guard yeah. to come in and I'll get him. It's He's using the old techniques again. Uh, that's really good. Yeah. I like that, man. That's really cool. And, he, yeah, he's obviously knows that he can be at the top of a lift because he did that in uh, License to Kill, obviously recently he got to indeed. the top of a lift. Yeah. And uh, Diamonds, he's been on the top of a lift. Yeah. So he's quite, he's quite au fait at being at the top of a lift. Yeah, he is, isn't so, he? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think... And it's quite a cool little bit, isn't he? Because he jumps him and then he like just basically slams a guard against a lift. And, 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 uh, and then there's that nice moment where he's like, oh, do you know how to use one of these? Passes Natalia the gun and she's like... Tch. Yeah, of course I do. Sort of thing. Yeah. I feel like I feel like the Russians get military trained like before yeah. they're even oh, two yeah. years old. So yeah, yeah, of course you'd know. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So uh, okay, so this is this is like game on now, isn't it? Obviously, they're up on the dish, they're running along. Bond's going to go and try yeah. and jam the whole thing up. This is where it all starts to kick off. So this is awesome. Yeah, it's this it's is great, all, so good. And I, I tell you what, man, the way they they do this, the way they cut this is is incredible because if you think obviously there there's there's a lot of like stuff they're doing not for real you know especially when it comes yeah. to the fight at the very very end there's a lot of yeah. like green screen stuff going on but the way it's done is so it's done so well it's it's pretty much seamless like unless you're really yeah. looking for things you just don't notice it and right. um, yeah it's it's really done well and i i think like i was saying before I think when you have a classic Bond battle, it needs to be in some kind of like mad setting. You know, it's like on top of the cable cars in Moonraker or, or you know, yeah. in the in the fucking vault of Fort Knox. You need it to be in this grand yeah. thing. And I think that's obviously what they were trying to go for, Inspector, with that climax. It's like, let's just stick it in front of the Houses of Parliament. So we've got Big Ben in the background um, and all that kind of stuff. You, When it's done right... You, you you know when you pull it off the right way it's a really cool thing to have a fight in a place where you've never yeah. really seen a fight before well, and I think well this I know is a we mentioned example. it before but Mission Impossible the most recent that mm. fist fight at the end on the cliffs oh, like mate, there's a, there I is mean, a that, perfect example yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like that is one of the best looking locations to ever fight ever isn't it and I think this antenna is, is a really clever idea and I love the bit so you get Trevelyan in that little lift that he's going along, firing his machine gun at Bond, who like gets on the floor, fires back. So yeah. there's, there's a bit of that going on. And there's an amazing sort of... Well, it is a stunt, really. It's not like a, 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 a you know out there stunt, but I love the bit where Bond is running along and he's just at the top of the stairs and Trevelyan starts shooting and he basically leaps 
Bond does. He does a leap through the air into a tucked roll, going down these real mm. narrow sort of stairs, which are obviously like super high on this antenna, oh, and yeah. it looks great. And it's like proper, proper hardcore that one. And, uh, and yeah, that, I absolutely that, love that one bit. looks like it hurts, doesn't it? Like yes, you're not going to you come out of that hurt. intact, are you? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And then it gets, and then basically they end up indoors uh, inside the sort of machine, you know, where all the machinery mm. of the antenna is and stuff. And now. What I heard, I think this is true, that um, Martin Campbell kind of based this fight a bit around, well, took inspiration rather from the from Russia with Love. You know, the hard hitting stuff like. I, really, I don't like, think I've, I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, I, th- I think I think that's what I heard. But what we get, <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen the film, you mean? <laughs> yeah, I was joking, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, it's the one with uh, Robert Shaw yeah. and uh, Sean. Connery. Isn't that the one with the shark? <laughs> Yes, that's the one with the shark and the the spaceship and the exploding pen. (laughs) So, (laughs) um, yeah, so we get to the point indoors. Now, this is a proper good fight, isn't it? It is. So it's, it's, we see like knees to the head. We see headbutts. We see punches. We see, you know, chains being used. We see people being bashed through doors and it's just, it's just one of the best, you know, fist fights we've had for a long time. You know time, what? I, think. I was going to say yeah. that. I think this is another one of those unsung fist fights in the series. Like it doesn't get the 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 love it deserves. Like we all often say, like the Green Four fight in yeah, which Limbo, is like, amazing, which is fucking yeah. amazing. And I would yeah. say if you were to compare these two fights together, that one has the edge on this one, mainly for me because of the cooking implements being used. Yeah, Cause that so is so good. With so all the burning clever, oil and stuff. Yeah. But like this fight, man, is it's that same thing we often talk about when it's like a real frantic fight to the death. You watch a lot of films and it looks so choreographed, like, yeah, okay, here's mm. a punch from me and I'm going to block that one. I'm going to step over here and yeah. I'm going to throw a punch. This feels like it has that same element of, of just frantic fight to the death. And I tell you what, man, I couldn't spot much in the way of stuntmen doing this. Like, it looks no. like Pierce and and uh, and Sean Bean through most of that fight. I'm sure, I feel like there's that one shot where Bond, like, goes over that table. Do you remember? He's, like, goes off on the oh, side yeah, where yeah, he throws right. the yeah. chain at him, I think. Is that, is that the bit? Yeah, yeah. Which I feel like that's probably a stuntman just shot very well. But, like, most of that fight, you can see that's actually Pierce and an old scene being going at it. Yeah. It's very impressive, yeah. man. It, it totally is. Yeah. And it stays with you as well. It's one of those fights, like, we, we say, a bit like, obviously, the train fight inspector and, mm. and all these other ones we mentioned, that you feel it as you're watching it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you want. You don't want to watch a fight and, and, and not feel like you're a part of it yeah. and and this is one of those ones where you watch it and you kind of feel your body wincing yeah, just yeah. from watching yeah, what's yeah. on the screen yeah. and that's when you know you've got a good fight in front well, of you well the other thing as well to take into account is like when you see a fight like I suppose the Red Grant fight is a perfect example you've got two people from opposing teams going at it having a scrap having a rumble um, yeah. you know, or Bond versus anybody really, you know, but like a trained person, Bond going against Hinks or something like that, somebody who's in the business of, you know, dealing some damage. But this yeah. is the first and only time where it's two people who were previously on the same team, two double O's, man, going at it. Trained you know? to the max. Sort Absolutely. Of mano we, a mano. Exactly. And it's, it, they are given, each of them are given as good as they get, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a wicked fight. And if you haven't watched this film for a while, go back and watch it again, obviously, but pay special attention to this fight because this, yeah. I, I really it, think yeah. this deserves more attention than it gets this one. Totally. Yeah. It kicks ass. There's a little bit where there's a bit of an almost interlude with Bond, where they kind of separate, where Bond puts this pole within that massive chain, doesn't it? Yeah. Which stops the antenna moving. So that's basically causes this malfunction. And then they sort of catch up with each other again. Really, like you're getting elbows and knees, yeah. like really hard hitting. And then it gets to the point where basically um, Trevelyan has the gun and he's pointing at Bond, and Bond's got his hand up against that sort of release for the ladder. And he's like, You know, James. I was always better. And you just, and like there's that part where he's just about to take the shot. Yeah. Bond pulls the lever and then like hangs onto the ladder as it flies down. And that's a really, really cool bit as well. It is. I really like that. I tell you what is something of interest as well is that as I'm watching the, the director's commentary, Martin Campbell throughout the film actually talks a lot about the fight against the censors to get the, the oh, certification yeah. that they, they wanted to shoot for. And I think this was a 12 in the UK, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think um, you're right. Yeah, it was, yeah. And the, um, 
Yeah, and he was saying that a lot of the things, like obviously that thing with the headbutt, the UK censors didn't like with Xenia and Natalia, but there's a lot of stuff about blood that he comes up with. Like he would oh, really? refer back in the archive scene where all these soldiers are getting mowed down. He's like, you'll notice there's no blood anywhere and there, there's yeah. no, not even the little exploding things to show that they've been squibs. shot. Do you know what I mean? Is that what they're called? Squibs. Yeah. Squibs, um, yeah. You don't see any of that. They just like fall down and die like in the old Westerns and stuff. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing to show it. Anybody's actually been shot. And there's loads yeah. of stuff he talks about in the tank chase as well, where it'll go over that police car. And then in the but aftermath, people come you out. see them get yeah. out and kind of like dust themselves up that. and stuff. Yeah. And there's so many, it's really interesting to hear like the different rules they had to kind of go by where we're like, okay, well, we could go extra dark on that, but the sensors aren't going to like that. So we're going to have to peel yeah. that back a little bit. And he, he talks at length about the amount of blood, like he's this frantic fight and this bet, obviously mm. Trevelyan's bloodied up a little bit. But like yeah. even down to like the amount of blood on his on his mouth and stuff, they had to tone really? down so it di- didn't upset the senses too much. Yeah. And that's really interesting when you consider look at Casino Royale, like yeah. a little bit later on, like that stairwell yeah. fight is so brutal. Yeah. Oh, br- yeah. And he's so buggered up at the end of that. And there's, you know, uh, you consider the bit where he's like strangling him and stuff and how like nasty that is and how yeah. messed up. The leg shaking as he's yeah. doing it and, and stuff and, like that. And how yeah. messed up Bond is at the end of it. It's like, damn, what what's happened since 95? You know, in, in that in that yeah. eleven year gap, it seems to be they could get away with a lot more in two thousand and six than they would have well, gotten yeah. got in in ninety five, which is quite interesting. Or a bit like you were saying, there was just that turn of films going darker, wasn't yeah. there? And things becoming a bit grittier, and and um, I guess in terms of the, the action genre, it just got you know we had Bourne and all that going on you got yeah. your Batmans a bit later and, and things were just heading in that direction but it's, for whatever it's reason. interesting that isn't it because that that is yeah. a real indicator of the sign of the times of, of how what a different time that was compared to now and it's still for me I know you know it's what is it 23 years ago now this film came out and I, I still feel more or less the same as I did at 13 years old in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, when yeah. I think of those days and I picture myself going to the cinema, I look more or less as I do now, but in 1995, yeah. but obviously the truth is I'd have been 13 years old. But so that's funny. But yeah, so I think for a lot of people, this feels like such a, a recent time. But like we said yeah. before, when you consider what was 23 years before GoldenEye, you're in well, Majesty's yeah. territory. Crazy, do you know what I mean? And how Crazy. different, what a different world that was compared to what GoldenEye yeah. was. So it, yeah. it's interesting when you hear about the functional stuff like that, like getting around the census so they could get the certificate they needed. And, and that's why there's minimal blood in this film. There's there's mm. very little sort of graphic stuff happening. And then just 10 years later, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, strange, isn't it? Yeah. But um, yeah, like you said, I guess it's it it changes with the times, and and be interesting to see where. I mean, I can't. I guess they can't go too much more dark and graphic than things are at the moment. I mean, mm. with the way things are, so will that change? Will it just continue? Who knows? We'll yeah. have to have to wait and see. But yeah, that is really interesting point. That. Um, okay, so afterwards, basically, oh yeah. So what do you? Th- so this is basically the the climax of the fight. So Bond's dropped down on his ladder, does well to hold on because he yeah. drops down quite a lot. And then you've got um, Trevelyan that's going down after him, and it gets to that point where he he's he's hanging onto the ladder. He looks down at Bond, and he just basically lets his body slide down so his feet land on Bond's hands, yeah. and that's a really bit nasty, yeah. isn't it? But like in a really good way. I, I like that. I, I like that bit where it, just after that when he like puts his foot on Bond's like last remaining hand. <sighs> Yeah. The look Bond gives him, he's like, "Don't yeah. you dare!" You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, I, that's a, that's a cool moment, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. So basically, it ends up with both of them hanging off the bottom of this antenna thing. Things are not looking good for either of them. It's so precarious. Obviously, you see how high up they are and stuff like that. There's a, a couple of punches that again, some more headbutts thrown in. In fact. This film has to be the Bond film with the most headbutts going. Mm. If you think about it, you've got Bond at the helicopter controls, Bond headbutting the eject, uh, eject button. You've got, um, obviously, Xenia headbutting Natalia. You've got Bond headbutting um, uh, Trevelyan on this particular scene. Mm-hmm. You've got Trevelyan headbutting Bond two or three times in that big fight, like forwards, and he does a backwards headbutt. There's a lot of headbutting going on in this film, man. I guess there it's, is, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, so, yeah, so what what do you think about this very final part where I think Bond sort of headbutts him and then he kicks kicks Trevelyan. Trevelyan's about to fall backwards and he grabs him by the boot, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, what, 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 what do you feel about this whole bit? I think that's great. Do, from a production standpoint, like there's, they're yeah. obviously they're not actually up there doing it. But they're not. Visually, no. no. I hate to burst your bubble, buddy. <laughs> oh, but no. a lot of that is obviously like green screen done in the studios. 
But yeah. to me, it looks great. Those effects stand yeah. up, you know. It's not like Thunderball when he opens the door to the hotel room and he's you've got that awful back projection, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it is that similar technique. It's the green screen thing, but it's done very, very well. And like we say, when you don't notice it, it doesn't stick out like a sore yeah. thumb. That to me is when you've got a great effect there. But yeah, it's it's nice. It's one of these things where I think as he's from a character standpoint, when you've got Trevelyan hanging by his boot, um, very much like Necros bites the dust, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, he's hanging by his boot and you've got the the exchange, you know, for England, James. No, for me, right? That's nice. Very nice. I like yeah, that. that's, that's yeah. a bit of justice going like, on there. Yeah, too right. Do you think, because I feel like if I remember right, that moment just above where they are now, where he says, you know, James, I was yeah. always better. Yeah. That's the first time that's really mentioned, isn't it? In the film. What that Trevelyan said that he's better than Bond. Yeah, yeah. Like there, well, there, well, there's sort a of bit level in the statue garden. There's a bit in the statue garden where he says, "Oh, it, it, you know, it's f- stupid of you to think I hadn't even thought about every move that you were going to make, or something along those lines, yeah. isn't there?" Where he pulls the gun out. So I think Trevelyan is always thinks he's better than Bond. I, See, I, I, I think you, he's a bit arrogant over. Do you over think there was Bond. room? for them to have a bit more of that level of competition, like a bit more, like in the sense that maybe you could have sown those seeds in the pre-title yeah. sequence when they're working yeah. together and stuff and, and have it just like playfully done, but do you yeah. know what I mean? Sow that seed a little bit more. So for me, that payoff of, you know, I was always better. And then the, the actual death of Trevelyan might have been yeah. a bit, had a bit more weight to it. I feel like, cause I feel like that line, you know, I was always better to me feels like it should have been the result of something a little bit more. It should have been built up yes. more to that point. Whereas yeah. that's not really explored throughout the rest of the film. Do you I know wonder what? If- I, I, yeah. No, I bloody love it, Tom. I bloody love Thanks, it. Man. And I think the pre-titles is, was the way to do it. And I think, because if you think about it, in the pre-titles, Bond gets surprised by Trevelyan. So Trevelyan kind of trumps Bond initially. Yeah. Then when they're going through the facility, it's Trevelyan who's shooting everyone. Yeah. So it's almost like he's the one in charge on this mission, even yeah. though Bond sort of sets the minds and stuff. It's almost like Trevelyan is, is that little bit better than Bond in terms of what he's – not better, but in terms of he's in charge. Yeah. And it, I think just a couple of little lines, because they have – they've got their chummy lines about, you know, last call, buy me a pint and all that. So you've got the friendship – but you're right. I think there needed to be that little bit of competition between them, yeah. just just to sow the seed for See, later on. Yeah, because oh, definitely, I feel like if you'd have sown that in the pre-titles, you could have yeah. brought that back in when they're facing off on the train when he's got Natalia yes. at gunpoint. You know, yeah, which um, didn't they could have played more. On they that, they could have built on that, and then there's the payoff at the end. You know, James, I was always better. Yeah. And then, yeah, I feel like that was a little thrill. I wonder if that was in any of the drafts and they just kind of cut it for whatever reason, for pacing mm. or something, I don't know. But but yeah, it's always it always made me think that. It's like I was always better. Yeah. And it was kind of like, oh, it's interesting they didn't explore that a little bit more. Yeah, I think that would have just added that extra layer, wouldn't yeah. it? And, and it almost, thinking about it now, it's, well, why didn't they do more with it? Yeah. Um, and it is a bit of a shame. Obviously, you know, we critique these films and... Uh, uh, and we love them, but it's still interesting to consider, you know, the what ifs and stuff, and I, and yeah. how potential improvements could have been made. And I think that would have been one of them, definitely. Yeah, yeah love it. Good idea. You put a lot of thought into this film, haven't you? Well, what can about? I tell you? I want, I want <laughs> Xenia Macken out on Natalia, please. That's yes, that's definitely. I can, I can forgive. I can forgive the Trevelyan competition backstory with Bond. That's secondary. Right. If I can have that first, please. That's my order. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get them both in. <laughs> that's fine. Um, okay. So while that's going, now that's an interesting thing. So obviously for England, James, no, for me, and he lets go. Trevelyan drops. God knows, you know how high they are. He's, and but yet he lands and he still survives because he's he's he obviously didn't die straight away. Mm. He's obviously you know screwed up and everything, but he didn't quite die straight do away. You, do you think that's what would happen <coughs> from a fall of that height? Because I remember people laughing at that. I remember my old man yeah. laughing at that and going, "Was it food survived that?" And I think my dad yeah. was expecting him to get up and come back at the end again, like they oh, do. Right. Often. Oh, right. But yeah, obviously, yeah. that wasn't the case. But I feel like, yeah, I feel he's mangled, isn't he? So he's going to land yeah. there. I feel like even if he's still alive, he's probably got about five minutes tops oh, left yeah, he's before not, he yeah, bleeds exactly. out. You know, his internal oh, yeah. organs are all mashed up and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, I do wonder whether, in reality, whether you would be out 
immediately you'd be just unconscious or whether you might have a couple of minutes of like yeah i guess it depends on what you landed on yeah. i mean uh, in terms of what part of your body and stuff if you landed head first i don't think you'd be uh conscious that's true for too long. Indeed. but um yeah I, you know because it's one of those things where i do remember sometimes thinking oh come on and then other times i think well actually you never know you know things like that could potentially happen and like you say it's not like he's he's dancing around and, and everything's fine yeah. you know all all good and everything he is he is basically gonna die um so you have that moment and then um obviously the helicopter comes around and natalia's sort of snuck on and she's yeah. got the uh the guy on the gunpoint in fact that's what distracts trevelyan initially mm. before bond gets the kick in and stuff like that um and then, so Trevelyan's fallen. Bond does that leap onto the helicopter skid, which is quite cool. Um, a bit, bit risky, bit precarious. You know, yeah. he didn't know if it's slippy or anything, but he does that. And then we get the whole part where um, it blows up. The antenna then drops and lands on Trevelyan and obviously dies. And so, if he died on the normal fall, how do you think that would have on the original fall? How do you think that compares to the to the added impetus of the antenna landing on him? And which more would you say would be closest to being hoisted by his own batard? It's got to be the latter. Uh, it, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I'm not complaining by yeah. any means. I'm just curious no, no. in reality if if you would yeah. you know have a couple of minutes before that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's nice. You see, you know, Trevelyan having a little scream as it all falls down on yeah. him. But yeah, that's yeah. two great uses of a petard being hoisted for two yes. for two characters, Xenia. Two good characters. And, and Alex, and, yeah. Okay, so moving on to another one, which I wouldn't say is a petard. Okay. <laughs> we will see. So it cuts back briefly to inside the base. Now, everything is all, you know, there's fire everywhere, explosions, everything's loaded debris and stuff like that. And then you've got Boris. And he survived. Yeah. And he's like, yes, I am invincible. And then obviously the um, li- liquid nitrogen behind him bursts and then covers him. And then he's just frozen in his little position with his glasses and yeah. stuff like that. Is that a good death or not? We've obviously saw something reasonably similar from Demolition Man a couple of years before that. Do you think, A, is that a good death? B, is it suitable for that character? Or, or do you think... Neither the above, it's crap and it should have been something else. Well, I suppose on the one hand, it might have been nice to explore Natalia taking down Boris because mm. they've had yeah, that rivalry have- back and forth. That to me would be, yeah. that would be the ultimate justice for Boris. Yes. But then yeah. obviously she, Natalia's busy elsewhere. So I suppose you've written yourself into a corner by doing that. Where you couldn't yeah. have the two of them face off, so it's almost. It's, I tell it's, you, oh, go on. I just thought of something. Imagine if, like, because, like, like, something to do with that. This is stupid. Like, you know, the password is chair. Imagine if he he, he was. I'm not even gonna go there. It's stupid. <laughs> something like he was stuck to his chair. <laughs> That's oh nice. my god, yeah. Chris! Or you think could, before you speak. You, or you could have got some knockers involved in there somehow. Exactly, yeah, that yeah. was the no, other I, thing. I, I don't know what you think. I, I, nice. I was trying to think. You know, something that related to what they've been through and yeah. stuff like that. Um, I, it's, but, it's, yeah. I tell you what, it's, it's, it's a, a cheap. It's a cheap death. It's, it's a very it's a convenient one. I will tell yeah. you that it's like shit. We've still got Boris. How do we tie up Boris? Yeah. I tell you yeah. what, he just stands up and then a gas thing explodes and he's frozen. Yeah, yeah let's tie that up nicely. Yeah, yeah no, I know what you're saying, yeah. but it is a tricky one in the sense that I don't know of a way you could get Natalia to take him down in a unless she out hacked him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That but would, then how would you die from that? Yeah, it's it's yeah. But at, at the end of the day, yeah. I, I feel like that's quite iconic is the wrong word because it's not, but it is it's a memorable moment to see it him is like memorable. arms up yeah. in the air, you know? Yeah. And it's obviously Definitely. it's a laugh moment because the whole I'm yeah. invincible thing from the beginning. And yeah. and like super computer geeks are very much like that, aren't they? They have their little yeah. sort of uh phrases and, and stuff I, that I like this to is use. it. Yeah. And perhaps Oh, actually, perhaps the liquid nitrogen was used as part of the cooling system for all of the computers because their mainframe and all their computer That's systems is going to be a lot. Yeah. So they need their cooling system so it doesn't overheat, like yeah. the superconductors and all that. So perhaps that's part of it. So in a way, yeah. if that is the case, then he potentially was. He's only gone and done you know, it. Yeah. We could yeah. have, maybe we could have had post credits just a little flash up bit of text <laughs> just to explain that one. You know, just to, <laughs> so we all, we're all aware of that. But yeah, nice. Yeah. You've done the job there, mate. Yeah, yeah I'm proud of you. Good stuff. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then after that, so Bond and Natalia, they basically 
uh, the helicopter, you know, drops them down. They they jump off the helicopter onto land, and whoever the helicopter pilot was gets away, even though he was on uh, the Trevelyan payroll. But I guess he hasn't got a master now, so yeah. he uh, he flies off wherever he was. And basically, so Bond and Talia end up. They start sort of kissing, and and they're like, oh well, no one's around here for miles or whatever. And then and then old Wade turns up. And you know this is a rescue plan. Yeah. The Marines, and then suddenly all these bushes, like the 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 Marines jump up. What 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 do you think in this one? Do you know what this makes me think of? It makes me think yeah. of the old eighties cartoons. You know when they they yeah. they foil the villain, and then yeah. so, you know Spider Man would make a joke or something, and everybody yeah. or He Man I think was particularly guilty of this. Or yes. Thundercats. Yes. They would all stand yeah. around all the heroes together, and they go, <laughs> <laughs> and they'd all share a laugh, and then you cut to credits. Yeah. It's very much like that. But at the same time, it is it is it's one of those things where let's look at the classic, typical things that happen here. Yeah. Bond's arm in arm with his lady. He's underneath a parachute in Goldfinger. He's in a, you know, a rubber dinghy in Thunderbolt. Loads of them. You, you know, <laughs> in like in half of the films. You know, all that kind of thing. Macking out, cut to end credits, yeah. and we we're expecting to see that again. And then it's a nice yeah. little surprise. Let's look at some classic examples of that. Submarine in uh, in Spy Love Me. You only live no, twice. You only live twice. That's the one. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Submarine and you only live twice. You know the the. What is that hook system called in Thunderball? That like skyhook. Skyhook. I should have known that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That whisks him off. It's one of those little surprising yeah. little twists at the end there. So Bond's going to have to wait to, uh, you know, get his get his pudding, get his end away, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. So what do you think? Because I have heard some people say that it almost didn't quite. <coughs> you know how, for instance, Live and Let Die, Scaramanga is done with. Um, but yeah, there's still that little bit with Nick Knack. Yeah. Li- uh, uh, sorry, uh, in Live and Let Die, it's Tee Hee. In The Man with the Golden Gun, it's Nick Knack. Yeah. And there's always that little character at the end. Yeah. Do you think this film feels like it, it should have had another one of those? Or do you think, no, it's fine without it? You know what, mate? I suppose the only character left is Boris, isn't it? You, maybe yeah, it that's the way Boris. you'd have done it. Is that you? Maybe he w- he's on the helicopter or something and he would have had a go yeah. and then Natalia would have killed him somehow in the helicopter or something. I suppose the difference is is you never feel like Boris is a physical threat, do you? No, he's not. So, no, he's, yeah, yeah. You, you know, when, he could do remote control airways like in uh, Few Eyes Only or the helicopter he could. through his computer yeah, system. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, that's an interesting thought actually. Yeah, because you either do go all out, okay, I'm in a dinghy, end of, let's mac out, game over. Yeah. Or you have that little last minute fight the end there but yeah, yeah to be honest i feel like those kind of changes i feel like everything was wrapped up pretty nicely you know yeah, i don't, no, I, don't I certainly don't feel disappointed uh by the end until the end credits start rolling chris <laughs> yes and, and then I know i'm why. really disappointed. I know i'm why. gutted as soon as that happens yeah <laughs> is it because can i take a wild stab in the dark here a wild guess could it be something to do with the experience of love, Tom. It's everything to do with the experience of love. <laughs> that song sounds like something Sting shat out on his lunch break and then said, you know what? That's so awful. I'm never going to even show the missus. I'm just going to throw that away. That's a total waste yeah. of time. It's I, I don't even begin to understand why that song is there. I don't even begin to understand why most of the score is there, to be honest. So well, I guess it makes sense. It's because Mr. Sarah sung the song, didn't he? And he he's did, like, well, if yeah. I'm doing the score, I'm If you I'm call that singing, song. I don't know. I call well, it well. like constipated, trying to pass a... <laughs> past something that's too big for the gap but you know it's just yeah it's a shame it, it's though it terrible. is a shame yeah. i think i think that's where uh, the ending of golden night po- post antenna sort of thing i've always thought what is it that leaves me a bit flat well i haven't thought what is it i've known it's a song but it, it's just that thing where i would have liked to have had something else just just to see it edited with something else would have been you, you know been, what you you yeah. do go imagine if it ended on the on tina turner song again Dun, 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 dun. That would have been nice. Yeah. That yeah. would have been all right, even yeah. if it was the instrumental. You know, just to just to bring it into the credits, yeah. or, that would have worked perfectly. Go cl- classic Bond theme, you know, yeah. classic orchestral yeah. Bond theme. I think that that's always a, a great fallback. Like, let's look at there's some there's some films here that do something similar. So let's look at the Living Daylights. You know, you've got yeah. if there was a man, man played over, oh, yeah. over the end credits, yeah. which obviously that features in the score itself doesn't it that track yeah. so that that kind of works for me that is it does it feature in the track i'm pretty sure it does doesn't it isn't there i like, know where is everybody gone oh shit does. maybe i'm thinking of where is everybody gone yeah of course. yeah that's what i'm thinking of i take it all back i think but that still doesn't sound anywhere near as bad as as the experience of love I think, no if there was a man i would take all day long yeah. over the experience of love 
Yeah. It's just so inappropriate. It's like Madonna's yeah. song. We won't go down that rabbit hole, but it's so inappropriate and yeah. not suited to yeah. anything that's happened in the film. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think for me, this should have kicked straight into the Bond theme because yeah. here it is. We've just delivered a brand new Bond for a new generation. Everybody thought mm. it was over. Here we go. Massive success. I feel like that would have tied up the film perfectly. You know, as soon yeah. as the, those helicopters go off into a distance, kick into the Bond theme for the end credits. Yeah. Perfect. But yeah. the experience of Love Man, I mean, God knows what was yeah. going it on It is there. a pile of shit, isn't it? It, it is really is a pile absolute, of shit. I, you know, I like, when we talk about Bond, our kind of manifesto is to is to obviously look at the positive side of things because at the end of the day, you know, like we've said before, who are we to 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 criticize anything? We're just a pair of Muppets on a podcast at the end of the day. We've certainly not made any world busting blockbuster movies or anything <laughs> like that. But you know, I, I, I can't look at this positively <laughs> at, no. at all because it is that bad. There is no positive side of it to look at. It's just dog shit it really yeah. is and yeah. i i think they knew it as well because there was the whole thing of of them getting john altman in and john yeah. altman recently in that interview which you can read a bit of on on the james Bond radio website matt chernov went along and 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 kind of uh, reported on that for us and when he got the call it was basically he said that they were like oh, listen we need you to come in our centerpiece scene which is obviously the tank chase mm. um Need some work because the score we've got is just a fucking disaster, which, and we which, need you to rescue which us. Which begs the question, then: like, did I don't know how, what the turnaround time was to create the score and and you know the final song or whatever. But did they just leave him to it and kind of go, "Yep, okay, here you go. See you in a few weeks' time." Let's well, hope it's good because uh, obviously they, as the, as a director and the producers, you'd what you'd want to keep up to date with how it's going and and, and stuff like that. Yeah, but um, I don't. But then know. you've chosen your man, haven't you? You've yeah. chosen your guy or your. Or, I don't. You know, I don't proposer, know what the answer so. to that is, but at the end of the day, I feel like deadlines are obviously a massive thing and the yeah. score is something that obviously happens later on in the process, isn't it? So I feel like they must have been up against the deadline, but um. But yeah, it's. Just, I, I know Michael G. Wilson in an interview said that using Eric Serra was an experiment. He used that exact yes. term, which it, was he? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm obviously getting John Altman in to, to rescore the tank chase. They obviously Brilliant knew idea. what they had was something that yeah. wasn't quite floating the boat. Quite there. But yeah. I, and I feel I, feel, I can't remember the exact time frame of it that he mentioned, but I feel like he was right up against He's it even to get tight, that yeah. one thing done. So I guess uh, at some point you just have to kind of go for it. Yeah, but of yeah, it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah I, that, to be honest, man, like you were saying earlier, the, the worry about Goldeneye is that it's it's aged poorly over the years mm. and stuff, and it it does look older than even Tomorrow Never Dies does. There's something about yeah. it. I, I don't know whether it's just like the colours being used or, or something, mm. or maybe it's the models, that are a lot more models compared to Tomorrow Never Dies. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it does look considerably older than the, yeah. the next two films, even though they're relatively close together. And I, 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 yeah, I don't know exactly what that is, but I think the thing that, the, literally the, the thing that, does not do it justice in any way, shape, or form. Is that score? I think what yeah. you would have. I mean, imagine if they'd have got John Barry back for this, or if they'd have even <laughs> got David Arnold in a film early. Oh, you know what film. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Imagine what that would have sounded like. And when you when you Golden Eye almost exists on its own little plane because of that score. To me, it sort of it mm. dates it so much. Just not even from the visuals, just the sound of the music. You know? Yeah, I, th I think the I think the score does date it. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, big time. I think it sounds like the fucking Nintendo sixty four. It sounds like a computer game score. It doesn't sound like mm. a movie, a rich orchestral Bond score, which is what it should have been. Mm. There are still some tracks though that I am keen on. Like which ones? That, that I, uh, well, I do. I like the pre-titles sort of um, bit of music that they've got, where he's uh, going across the dam and stuff like that, uh, and going through um, the chemical place. I uh, I like the bit where they're in the archives and around that sort of bit. But I think, and it, I, and even Ladies First, I know I mentioned this before. I don't mind it, but there are some absolute stinkers in there, and yeah. I think overall it, it has dated the film uh, definitely i think yeah. the score um but that's enough talking about the score so we know about right. the score obviously overall thoughts on the film so aside from the score what are we thinking now this is part three firstly has part three lived up to part one and part two in your eyes damn right 
I to be honest, okay. I when I when I think back through this film. Yeah. I think when you consider the the climate of the times, the position that Bond was in at the time, double challenge. The last Bond film that came yeah. out was six years o- earlier. They were, even Bond himself of the day was like, yeah, this is going to be the last one. You know, the thought is that Bond has run its course. He's doing way less at the box office than, he's, than he used to do. You know, and then this big, big change and big, big gap after License to Kill. There's no Cold War anymore. That's the whole foundation of what Bond is all about. He is a spy during the Cold War and that's what he is. And there's no Cold War anymore. So he's even relevant. What that film was up against was more so than any other Bond film. Well, not any other Bond film, but most Bond films, you know, there's those key moments. Had a lot to prove, didn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. It had a lot to prove. Like, for example... A perfect thing would be like Majesties. That obviously had a lot to prove more so than than yeah. previous Bonds. Spy Love Me did as well. It was a very similar situation with Man with the Golden Gun not being as successful. All those kinds of things. There are those make or break it kind of moments that you have to do. And this was definitely one of them. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think it really delivered, man. Like we said before, it's like a it's like a greatest hits of Bond, Bond all kind of sewn up into one film. And it's it's not trying to do much different it's not like it's trying to break the mold it's just trying to reinvent that mold Re- take the best bits of everything we've loved about bond over the years and deliver it fresh for a mid-90s audience and i think it delivered 100 i i when i think if i if you said to me okay you've got the reins they're gonna they're gonna remake golden eye like you can go back in time you're martin campbell or at least you're you're sitting next to martin campbell and he really trusts yeah. you tommy he's gonna listen to everything you say like whatever you say to martin campbell he's yeah. gonna do there's not a lot i could say i would say maybe you know a couple of things like i've you know let's get xenia and natalia to mac out a little bit i would say could we do more with the car but at the end of the day, I don't really like it, it is a common criticism, but I don't feel like a car set piece was really particularly needed. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's kind of, I think ultimately the mistake there is to build up the car at the Q branch. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, then yeah, never yeah. have the payoff. Yeah. So I yeah. feel like, you know, you could, you, you maybe you could have written into the story that it was, you know, his car, the car's not ready yet or something like yeah. that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and then that kind of solves that problem. Um, you know, and obviously for the next film, they went all out in the car chase to kind of make up for that, I guess. But yeah, there's just a few little plot threads that I would have been like, oh, maybe it would be nicer to work through that a little bit more. I like that idea of the competition. Yeah, um, I feel know, like that's a, a little bit, bit of a missed, two. Yeah, a bit of a missed yeah. opportunity because it's literally 006 versus 007. Yeah. And of course, yeah. there's going to be some rivalry there, man, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and playing on that a little bit more. And that would have made the, the climax all the more sweeter. But other than that, I... If, other than the score, which would be mm. priority number one, let's not hire Eric Serra. Let's do whatever John Barry wants to, to get him back on board. Or there's this new kid called David Arnold who we should definitely hire instead if we can't get John Barry. You know, that that to me is what is what the film really needs is that is a fresh yeah. score and it would be yeah. all the better for it. Other than that, I'm really happy with it. I think it's great. I think it reinvented Bond just as it needed to be. We, we had a great bond with Pierce there. For me personally, he brought a lot to the role that I was missing from Tim. Like, mm. again, don't get angry, everybody who loves Tim. Like, don't, you know, don't get on the Twitters and all the rest of it. It's all right. It's just, you know, that that sort of smirking, eyebrow-raising lover man bond, Pierce pulls off brilliantly and I love it. And that's totally. that to me. He delivers that for me in spades, and I love it. I love, I love the new M. I love the whole uh, interplay between the two of them. I love the new Money Penny. I think she's great. And there's another thing to think about as well: is how much Money Penny and M are involved lately. In this film, they are firmly in the old classic positions. You see them in the office, you never see them again. Like it's that's yeah. just them done, isn't it? You know, um, yeah. which is interesting. What did you think? Okay, so that's that's a quite nice summarization. I think for me, in terms of Act Three, compared to Act One and Act Two, there was something. I I mean, overall, I love I love Gone. I think it's brilliant. I think Act Three, there were one or two things that didn't quite hit the mark as much as the previous two acts, uh, previous two parts. I'm just that interior, that um base. I think the interior of it could have been a bit better, a bit more memorable, uh, and stuff like that, and um. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think I think it's great. Let's let's quickly go through. So you had the Trevelyan train bit. 
I thought that was quite good. Obviously, there's a standoff and all of that and having to get through the floor and then the explosion. Then you've got that little bit in the Caribbean with um with the for initially with the Z three in the plane and then yeah. Bond and uh and and Natalia just chilling out on the beach and stuff like that. So again it's it, it's not too bad. It's kinda like you've got to have your, your peaks and your troughs in terms of pacing, haven't you? And that was obviously the, yeah. like the slower part before you get the next beat um which comes through. Then you've got the jungle cr- um crash with the plane and the Xenia fight, which I thought was really cool. Um and then yeah, I th- I think uh, yeah, and that whole I do like I do like the whole idea of the gold knight itself being you know these two satellites and, and what it can do. I think that's I think that's fantastic. Um, I think the, yeah, I think the interior of the the base does drop it down. I th- I, I just like something a bit more memorable. Yeah. It's, like it, like you said, that whole idea of the curved bit in the roof. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Thank you very you much. Could have worked I, I, around uh, that. I thought about that all, all by myself. I came out with that. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, is as as well. That makes me think of when you think of those classic Ken Adams sets. Not all of them, yeah. but a lot of the no, class, no. there's a lot of circular stuff going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, a sim- dead simple one is the the spider room in Doctor No when he goes to pick oh, up the spider. So you know good. what I mean? Like yeah, things yeah. like that. I think w- when you can use something circular like yeah. the bottom end of that globe for a room, it just feels bondy and doesn't it? Yeah. So it's definitely. that was a bit of a missed opportunity on that one, I think. Yeah. I think so. But I really liked the Bond versus Trevelyan thing. Obviously the added competition would have been nice, but the fight at the end is fantastic, yeah. like so hard hitting. The fact that they're on this antenna you know, so high up and everything is great as well. I think that's brilliant. And the finish, uh, you know, the way that they uh, sort of finish them and, and everything is really, really good. You can, there's you no, know, there's not a lot of love uh, lost between the two which is always yeah. good I think in terms of the Bond girls I think Xenia is one of my favourite characters in the series I think she's fat, you know so good in the way that she kills people she's so over the top but it works yeah. um, and it's so memorable as well and, and like she's definitely one of my favourite sort of femme fatales um, Money Penny MQ all, all brilliant I think I think Pierce has got great chemistry with all three of those yeah um, and I know we mentioned this in the first part, but that scene with Bond and Money Penny, yeah. you know, new Money Penny, and it's it's just how how cold they are towards each other is yeah. so good. And there's just that little bit to, at the end where they're like, you can see the respect has grown, and it's like come back alive after yeah. you know, kind of uh, scolding each other a little bit. And I, I that's that's actually one of my favourite scenes yeah. in the film. That's um, that is a beauty. Yeah, and and the whole Russian setting and bringing that into into the you know the part of the story um, was needed, and and that was a brave move. It it, so, you know, it makes me think of uh, the first of the recent Star Wars movies, Episode Seven. Um, how you know you got one of the greatest movie villains of all time with with Darth Vader in the original trilogy. How do you beat Darth Vader? What and I think what they did there with Kylo Ren was quite clever in the sense that yeah. he wants to be as cool as Darth Vader, but he's constantly yeah. in his shadow in his character. I think that was a really clever thing to do yeah. to sort of like almost because we all know you're never going to get a, a cooler villain than Darth Vader in the Star Wars no. universe. So like, what? How do you handle that? And I think that's a genius way of doing it. And it's a, a similar thing with Bond. Yeah? Everyone's saying the cold war's over. What's the what's the point of Bond anymore? Yeah. Sticking him firmly in that world of the aftermath of the Cold War, literally right there on screen, I think was a great move. Yeah, absolutely. So what I want to know is, after all, all this six-year hiatus, what else have you learned? Obviously, we mentioned the dialogue and the humour, yeah. which is spot on. I think this is definitely some of the best uh, in the series, definitely. Yeah. What else? Was there anything else new that you learned about about the film or yourself while watching it? Or, <laughs> uh, or did your opinions... Obviously, you loved it before and you loved it now. Is there anything that's changed or that you've appreciated sort of this I, time around? I think I actually fancy Beers Brosnan. I think that's what I've learned <laughs> yeah. about myself. He's yeah. such a good looking dude, you know? And I think the, the, the actual thing with that <laughs> is one thing I might have changed a little bit as well. If I, if I just get my paintbrush on the film is I would say Trevelyan doesn't look that memorable. And I know we touched mm. on this last time, I, I was, yeah. you know, visually he's kind of dressed in black all the way through which is quite a villainous thing to do that's fair yeah. enough and I guess it's carrying on the double O type vibe isn't yeah it, in terms it of- certainly is you, you know you, you wouldn't want him suddenly showing up in a Blofeld jacket or anything that would feel no. too forced 
But I feel like visually, I feel like maybe they should have made more of that scar tissue and made yeah. him even more mangled at the end because yeah. it's yeah. it almost feels like a it because it, it, I feel like that might have been another another trade off is that like as they're going head to head at the fight at the end, you've got Bond who is like the ultimate cool looking geezer, the ultimate cool dude, going yeah. against this dude who used to be a double O. But yeah. now, because of Bond, obviously he blames him for it. He's just this mangled mess. I don't feel that yeah. scar tissue looks mangled it's, enough. No, Do you know no, what I mean? I yeah, feel like I know you could, what you mean. it's almost like when Blofeld turns up at the end of Spectre, he looks completely, completely yeah. disfigured. I feel like maybe they could have gone more Do, down that route. What about, what about the whole idea? You know, in um, The World Is Not Enough, where Bond is injured his shoulder yeah. and Renard knows about it and he's sort of pressing it. Yeah. What if... Because of the explosion at Archangel, um, Trevelyan not just had the face, but had some sort of injury that Bond knew about, and uh, and Bond kind of used that against him. Yeah, and and, and, and obviously Trevelyan could have been really yeah. pissed off that he's kind of left him with this thing. And that might not at the detriment to his fighting yeah. uh, abilities, because obviously you want them to be at the peak of their game, sort of thing. But that, possibly that. But, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I tell you what I've learned about myself, and I, yes. I think I think ultimately it's. It's funny when other people say things to you that you don't even realise. And I, I remember telling the story recently how uh, years ago my mum said to me, I, I think Roger's your favourite Bond, isn't he? And at the time I went, nah, nah, I'm all about Sean. Sean's the best, for sure, Sean's the best. And it wasn't until years later I realised that Roger is the Bond that I watch the most. He's the one yeah. I quote the most. And he's the so one that just makes me happiest. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Out of all the Bonds, <laughs> yeah. I love the man. And I, so it's like, oh shit! I didn't even realise Roger was my favourite Bond, but he clearly is yeah. because I yeah. I never stop quoting the man. So there's that, and I think what I've realised about myself from revisiting Goldeneye and and from how much I love Spectre as well is that my favourite style of Bond, I think, is the slightly lighter hearted Bond. Like this, yeah. this isn't like a super. You know, it's not like a Spy Who Loved Me metal teeth and sort of crazy, sort of almost comic booky Bond, which I'd say Spy Who Loved Me is. It's not quite there, but it's still leaning towards that world. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The more sort of sort of fantastical side of Bond. It's certainly not back to basics, Casino Royale sort no. of Bond, is it? Um, not at all. And I think I've learned what I've learned about myself and my taste of Bond is I I need Bond to be a lover man. I need him to be able to really pull off the comedy and the quips, which is yeah. what. I hadn't seen from Daniel until Spectre. Mm. And I think that's, yeah. you know, that moment when he's walking across the rooftop looking like a bad... Yeah. I need him to look like a badass as well, I've realised. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't need him... Yeah. If he do, if he doesn't look ultimately cool at all times, like that to me is a little notch on the other in the other direction for me. If he looks badass all the time, that's another another uh, uh, uptick for me. But And I think, like, that's the word. I don't know where that word came from. I'm, I'm but, going with that. That's good. But, like, when you look yeah. at Bond throughout Goldeneye, he looks the business throughout. Yeah. He really uh, does. He really does yeah. look the business. And the, it's funny how long his hair is as well, mm. when you think about it. Like, I don't know. That's it, true. Like, think Compare about, that to yeah. Daniel's yeah, cut Yeah, exactly, in a which was Skyfall. way too short. And that's, yeah. that's I think that's probably the main reason why I wasn't that keen on Skyfall is because of the haircut <laughs> and he didn't look cool enough. I think that's ultimately what yeah. my problem it with that film was. It did affect him, though. Yeah. It did make it. You think how cool he looks in Quantum yeah. and Casino, but Quantum, he looks amazing. Yeah. And then Skyfall, it just... Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? How yeah, much yeah. of an effect that can have. But I tell you what, like especially on that in those Cuba scenes where he's talking mm. to Jack Wade and stuff, his hair's like all over. He's almost like yeah. got like a surfer dude haircut, isn't <laughs> yeah. he? Do you know what I mean? He's almost, yeah. He could have just yeah. come in off the waves and be hanging out, you know, after after being out surfing all day. But which is an interesting thing. But <coughs> I guess that was the nineties for you, you know? Yeah, that's it. Longer hair, longer yeah. hair. What about so you? What I've, have you learned? What have I learned about Golden Knight? I've learned that, similar to you, I'd forgotten quite how much humour was in it, but good humour. Mm. And that, compared to certain other films, the, <coughs> I've said it 10,000 times, so apologies for repeating myself, but I just think the dialogue is so good in this mm. and how... Um, no matter who Bond is speaking to, there's good backstory for the characters opposite them, and that's what they're used within within these scenes. Like everyone has a bit of backstory to them. Zukovsky, uh, you know, is great, but I love that bit with Money Penny and and obviously M and 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 Trevelyan stuff. So yeah, I've learned that the humour is there and it's done really really well. I've learned that Brosnan looks. He does look the business without yeah. a shadow of a doubt in this film. Um, so, I, yeah, that whole Bos Brosnan bashing thing, I can't, I don't get, I can't see where that's coming from. I really I, can't. I can, but, I can um, understand it when you relate it to Die Another Day. Yeah. But, but no, that's not the dude's fault. I think, mm. 
what I think what you've done there is you've summed it up perfectly in the sense that when you've got wicked dialogue to work with, mm. right, your performance is going to shine. When you've got mm. bad dialogue, no matter what you do with it, it's always going to just be a bit turd. tough, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You can't yeah. polish to, my name is Mr. Kill. Oh God, do I really have to say this fucking line? Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. it's that, isn't it? You know, and I think that's where some of the 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 especially Die Another Day falls down. But again, like when you get to the world is not enough and stuff, there's some there's some definite sort of cringe moments in there, and I think that's down mm. to the writing more than it is, Piers. Mm. And it's like yeah. ultimately, if you've got some dodgy dialogue, you've got to deliver it's going to come across a bit dodgy, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's yeah. just no matter who you put in the room, if you put Sir Lawrence Olivier in there, it's going to come across a bit dodgy, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it is what it is. Although I can imagine Ray Fiennes could probably handle any dialogue. Maybe, for an maybe, <laughs> maybe. But, yeah. uh, you know, I'm sure he's had a few stinkers over the years himself. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think Pierce comes in for me in this film and he delivers a, a perfect is a difficult word to use, but it's as close mm. to perfect as you're going to get for a portrayal of, of a 90s Bond, you know? Yeah. Michael G. Wilson said in the, in the director's commentary, he said when they were shooting the casino scene at the beginning, opposite Xenia, mm. he said the moment he stood back and saw Pierce sit down at the casino table and kind of get ready, he was like, he just knew in his heart that the world would accept yeah. him as Bond. He just he yeah. just knew it. He just felt there was a magic in the room at that moment and he just knew Pierce would be a successful Bond. Hmm. And uh, and for me, man, I've got absolutely zero complaints, man. He does yeah. he does it all so well. He does the action really well. He yeah. does the casino scenes. He does the love making. He does the humor. He does all of it really yeah. well. I've got absolutely zero complaints. The only right. thing I think you could possibly complain about is the old elbow run at the beginning. That is a little... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But other than yeah, that, yeah. that's fine. I can yeah. live with that. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Sweet. Um, and also, I mean, there's a couple of just... That bit on the manticore, you know, when he fights the deckhand with the towel and then mm. pats himself. There's a lot of moments that, that Bond is being cool and, and the tie adjustment in the tank and stuff yeah. like that. It's just... It's, it is kind of... No one else can do that. Yeah. Only Bond can do that and pull it off. And when you've got someone like Brosnan doing Bond, he definitely pulls it off. Yeah, so yeah. I think overall, Gold Knight, absolute banging film. Brilliant, brilliant sort of first film after a six-year hiatus mm. and for Brosnan's first film. Really, really strong. Um, yeah, looking forward to uh, reviewing the next one. Yeah, me too. We, oh, dude, we're getting close now, aren't we? We are oh. really getting close to it. The most anticipated episode of JBR of all time. Let's try and space yeah. these reviews out a bit more. Yeah, yeah um, okay. But yeah, there we go. So, uh, right. okay, so that about rounds out our uh, our golden eye. Uh, review Experience. so obviously next time it is the turn of the JBR family to have their say yes <coughs> sorry I'm having a little bit of sore throat over here um, so get in your 90 second reviews we want to hear what you've got to say what your thoughts are if you completely disagree with us that's absolutely yeah. fine we want to hear what your thoughts are you know um, if you loved it, like uh, like I certainly do, then we want to hear your thoughts. You know, if you thought it was a middle of the road Bond film and you, you, it doesn't really float your boat, we want to hear from you as well. So it's always interesting to hear from the JBR family. So uh, yeah, send us a voicemail. Tommy's <laughs> really struggling over there. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Have you got any water? I'll, I'll grab some in a minute. All right, okay, we'll do it in a minute. Firstly, okay, then finally, before we move on from the review, are you able to rank? Golden Eye. Does it? Can you can you sort of say where it stands, or maybe not a specific number, but whereabouts in the scheme of twenty four films? Oh, mate, um, it's right up there. I, so, what are you talking? Top, top, what? Top ten, uh, top five? It's top it's one. Difficult to say because when you when you run it down to five films, and you've got the likes of Goldfinger, Majesties, Spy Who Loved Me, Limb Let Die. You know, from Russia with Love, Thunderball. It's like, mm, oh, it's Jesus. Tricky, it's, it? They're so untouchable, a lot of those films. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but uh, I don't, it is, yeah, I, I, I think if you put it up next to a, a Goldfinger, then I feel like Goldfinger is naturally the winner out of that. Yeah. So I feel like in the grand scheme of things, you've got to go top 10. It's like getting yeah. on the top five if it's not top five. Yeah. Okay, cool. There we are. So, uh, yeah, it'd be good to. What about you? What what are your thoughts? Oh, right. Okay. (laughs) My turn. Um, No, I reckon for me, 
It's it, yeah. I mean, it is it's tricky. I wouldn't put it as high as you. I do like it though. Like I like it a lot. There is a bit of that dated feel and the soundtrack and one or two other little things which we've mentioned which don't quite you know push it down a peg or two for me compared to your opinion. Yeah. But it is a solid Bond film and yeah. And uh, I I think I don't know somewhere between ten and fifteen maybe for me. Interesting. Yeah, Something I, like I that. think probably mine, closer to the ten than the fifteen. But I think it might around. come in around 007 for me. Actually, I Ooh, think that's probably nice. where it comes in. Yeah, on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we are. So that is Golden Eye done and dusted. So should we have a listen to our listener trivia question from the start of the show? Let's do it. This one came in from Steve Oxenrider. Let's have a little reminder. Which four consecutive Bond films feature a reptile? All right. Right. Now, my mind immediately went, okay, Limb Let Die. That's that's got some gators in there. So yeah. they are reptiles, well, aren't they? Have I have I got Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah. All right. no, no, 100%, yeah, I didn't really yeah, yeah. pay attention in science at school. <laughs> so I suppose that comes under science. Does that come under science? Bi- bio- biology maybe? I guess so. Yeah, I don't know. Which but, is a science. So yeah, yes. like, all right. I, I, science was never my strong suit, Chris. <laughs> it has to be said. Um <laughs> Yeah. So that was where my brain originally went to. And then I thought, okay, Man with the Golden Gun, Thailand, there's got to be some kind of lizardy kind of things. I've been there many times. There's lots of geckos running around. So there's probably yeah. going to be some, even if I can't think of an obvious moment with a lizard in. But then I thought, Spy Love Me. And I can't think of any reptiles in that off the top of my head. So mm. I'm thinking more 80s bod. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's killing me? Well, the one that initially came to mind straight away was Iguana, License to Kill. But then I thought, well, hang on a minute. I looked at the films either side of that and I couldn't think of reptiles. That was a, When someone said reptile bond, the first mm. thing I thought was igu- Iguana. Mm. But I think I've got the four. I think I've got the four. I think it might be a John Glenn related run of films. Would that be Wh- Which ones? <clears throat> I, I think it's... I th- well, go on, which ones? So... Um, doesn't Zorin have something? No, he doesn't, does he? <laughs> yes, no. horses, I guess. He's got yeah. horses. They're you, not reptiles. You know what? I, know I tell you where I think it is, and Go then you've got to see if you can think which films. I think it could potentially be the four most recent Bond films. Oh, hello. All right. Uh, what have we got in Casino then? Uh, casino, we've got uh, the snake. Snakes are reptile. The mongoose and the snake at the oh, yeah. start before they do the little, uh, you know, the parkour chase and stuff like that. Quantum, you've got, you know, when he's doing that gun thing with Camille and they're in a the desert and there's that sort of lizard thing on the rock. As oh, yeah. Cleaning oh, the guns. Dude, yeah. Komodo, obviously, in Skyfall. Yeah. And Inspector, you said it about two minutes ago. Gecko. Do you remember when he's in the torture chair and there's that little strange is, bit where you see there? the gecko yeah. on the outside yeah. of the window, which which led to a whole sort of conspiracy well, theory of what that might mean. But if that those are isn't the four it, that I thought. You've, you've done it, basically. If if there's another run that, he, that old Steve is looking for, you've you've given an alternative four run, so you, you're definitely right. But let's see, because I'm just thinking there's snakes in Moonraker. Because you're thinking snakes? Yeah, snakes in Moonraker, obviously live and let die. Um, but spy, I don't think there's any reptiles in spy, is there? All right, should we turn it over to Steve and find yeah. out? Yeah, 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 yeah. The answer is Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, and Spectre. In Casino Royale, Bond in Madagascar starts pursuing the terrorist Malacca at a mongoose cobra fight. There's a close-up of a large lizard in the Atacama Desert near Dominic Green's Eco Hotel in Fauna of Solace. Near the, next, the Komodo dragons at the Golden Dragon Casino in Macau in Skyfall. And finally, Bon sees a blurry image of a lizard when he regains consciousness in Oberhauser's torture cell toward the end of Spectre. Very nice. nice indeed. How yeah. about that? Look at that. You pinned the yeah, tail on the donkey there, didn't but you? But that Chris? is a good question. That mm. is a damn good question. That's definitely not one because y- y- we do get the weird ones like, you know, which films have dogs and, and all this sort of stuff. And yeah. sometimes you can think of stuff straight away, and other times it's a bit of a thinker. And that is definitely more of one of the thinker type questions, isn't it? it? You've got is. to really sort of put, 
go through the films and stuff. But yeah, great question, Steve. Thanks a lot for that. Nice one, Steve. Good stuff. So next up, Chris, you know what it's time for? It's time for the guess the quote round. (laughs) (laughs) Shall I open it? Shall I open it? Um, Yes, I'm going to sound like Whisper by the end of this episode. Good God. Um, Now, Chris, it's the guess the quote round, obviously. It is. I I have a uh, a quote for you this week, but it's got a bit of a different spin on it. So I'm just going to warn okay. you because obviously it was your yeah. quote last time. I'm just yes. going to warn you to be ready because I I I've, I've changed the rules a little bit this week. It must oh, be wow. said. Okay, yeah. you, but can I still do my one from last no, week? No, no, you're not allowed. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> of course you are. Go for it. Come on. Okay, so my quote from last week was: <clears throat> "Fadi lai, also ciao." All right. I feel like yes. I can I can narrow this down quite quickly. Yes. Is it you only live twice? No. Is it <clears throat> is it the man with the golden gun? No. Is it Tomorrow Never Dies? No. Is it Die Another Day? No. But that is the right language that you're looking for. Which or the Die Another Day one is the right language? Yes. Is it Goldfinger? Yes. Um, it's an extremely hard you're getting scene. me back from my hard question um, yeah exactly <laughs> alright um, is it to when when they're about to unleash the laser at Fort Knox and, mm. and they're dishing out orders to all the Korean it, kind of it's soldiers a, it's a bit earlier than that I mean this is a really hardcore one um, so it's quite a bit earlier than that um, it, so it's at Oh, okay, go on. Is Any it at guesses? Goldfinger's factory when Bond's scoping him out and he hears over his Operation Grand Slam? Very close. It's just after that. So basically, once Bond has heard that, he he goes back up the hill, um, and um, you know Tilly Masterson they hit the hit the wire and stuff, and they have to get out of there. And as they get in the car, the uh, the Korean guards get in the car, and he's running to his car and says, "Fadi lai, also ciao," and then gets in the car to chase after him. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's great. Yeah. Nicely done, man. All right, cool. cool. Wicked. Tough one, though. So anyone who's listening who got that, big props, yeah. because that was not an easy one at all. Big props indeed. Now, my quote mm. is not a quote this week. I've, oh, wow. got, okay. I've got a trivia question for you, which is... Oh, I thought it was going to be a noise. Yeah, it's, it's not a noise. It's, it's, okay. I've, I've been the rules. I've changed the genre of this round. For me, okay. it's not going to be a quote this week. It's going to be okay. a trivia question from Tommy. Cool. Down. Now, it's that. going to be related to Goldeneye. I thought this would be oh, the perfect okay. time to do it. This is a double barreler, right? Because uh-huh. I know God, you, you know the answer the to the first part of this question, but uh, I don't think you'll know the answer to the second okay. part. Okay. What scenes do mm. we see Michael G. Wilson in Goldeneye? Okay, so you know I'm going to know one of them, yes. but you use, that, you use the plural there. Mm. So there's obviously we've discussed that scene at length. Yeah. But there's another one oh, which man. I'm guessing this you don't know be, about. I'm I, I'm just trying to think. No, I think I might have to guess at that next week. Yeah. Um, right. That's good, Tommy. Right. I like it. Yeah. I like I, it. A lot. I, it's a good one. So I thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, nicely done, man. We'll we'll find out the answer to that one next time after we've heard cool. the ninety second reviews of everybody. That'll be a nice little yes. treat to look forward to. Now, have we got a listener quote this week? Yes, we do. It is from Steve from Northampton. So should we have a listen to Steve's quote? Let's do it. Hey, Tom and Chris, it's Steve from Northampton. Just thought I'd finally send you a quote, one I've been thinking of for a while. So here goes. Get lost. No, 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 down the back. Okay, there we go. I will uh, message back in a second with the answer to that one. Hey. Right. Wow, that's a good one. I'm yeah. pretty sure I can hear Daniel saying that. Oh, I thought I could hear Pierce saying it. <laughs> oh, like, really? <laughs> yeah. I thought I could, I pictured Pierce, but I can't. No, 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 down the back. Now you're saying Daniel. You're making me think of Daniel. Oh, now, um, now you minute. said that. Now get lost. No, no, no. Now I'm back. hearing Pierce saying that. Yeah, I can hear Pierce say it, and it's definitely not Goldeneye. We know that. But I don't think it's Die Another Day either. No, 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 down the back. I think. What sort of scene is coming to your mind? 
I'm feeling like maybe maybe the casino scene in World Is Not Enough. I think it is The World Is Not Enough. I'm sure it's The World Is Not Enough. Now you've well, said I'm that, sure that sent Brosnan me off a completely different no, direction. No, 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 down the back. I think it is he's seeing... I think... It, I think it is Zukowski as well, isn't it? I'm sure he's like it's one. It's something to do with Zukowski. Wait a minute, get lost. No, 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 no. Down the back. Yeah, it's definitely Brosnan saying it. It's got to be Brosnan saying it. I can hear his voice. It's definitely Brosnan. And I and I think you're right. I think it's the world is not enough as well. All right. Yeah. I don't. I <clears throat> I can't think of exactly when he says it, but for something that's making me think Zukowski's Casino. Should we yeah. have a listen to Steve and see? Yeah, what's, something uh, to do with Zukowski. We, what is, we that, that's we haven't seen that film for ages, but it's a that good, it's good one. Let's have a let's have a little listen. Hey, Tom and Chris, it's Steve. Just sending the answer to my guest, the quote from a little earlier. It was Bond in The World Is Not Enough when he's got the, I think it's a guard or a chef or something behind the door at the caviar factory and he uh, sends him out but tells him not to go out the front way. I uh, hope you guys got that and keep up the fantastic work you guys do. That was a bloody oh, good one. So there was a was Zukowski brilliant. connection in there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But it was just the wrong scene. The wrong scene. But good question, though. Nice one. Really, really good question there, Steve. All right, good stuff. Cool. So <laughs> next, <laughs> really I'll tell you what, I'll just, talk, I'll just talk for the rest of the podcast. Okay. I'll be quiet. okay, so the, new, the next, we have a new listener quote. And this week's listener quote is from Mr. Rory Simpson. So here we go. Over to you, Rory. Hi, Chris and Tom, it's Rory from the UK with a guess the quote for you. I've been holding off sending one of these off to you because I'm catching up on all your podcasts, having discovered you round about the Living Daylights review. So I've been starting at podcast one. I'm making my way to the very end, but so far no one's used this quote, and I hope no one has to just missed it. Anyway, the quote I'm going to give to you to guess is, yes, well, you can't lose. Yes, well. You can't lose. Good luck. Bye-bye. There we are. Nice one, Rory. And uh, I don't know if that's one we've had before, actually. It's a pretty pretty decent one. Um, it's, it's a, yeah, what are you thinking, Tommy? You, you got any any rumblings in your stomach about what it might be? Yeah, that's another one that doesn't come to me immediately. But uh, I, I've got to rack my brains on that one. And I'm sure it'll uh, it'll turn up eventually. Yeah, wicked. Okay, so we'll have a listen to that again next week and see if we can get it. So cheers for that, Rory. So what's the next quiz game? What have we got lined up, It's Tom? time for... Who wrote the score? Who lived and died? Who played Helga Branton? How did she die? Who wants to stop while the water in the Nivea? It's Tommy Trivia. That's right, everyone. It's time for Tommy Trivia, where I bust out one of the James Bond Trivial Pursuit cards and question Tommy. Now, this guy has been getting a lot right recently. Last week, I think you had five and a half out of six, didn't you, Tom? Yeah, I did, but yeah. in the lead up, you've been banging them out like 100%. So this week, we're going to start with vehicles. Are you ready? I am. I'm ready. Okay. And everyone listening too. How is the Spectre car that pursues Bond and Aki disposed of? With a big magnet and dropped in the yeah. river. <laughs> yeah, dropped in the river in, in, in Tokyo Bay, I'd say. Yeah. But yes, I'll give you that. Cool. What does it say? It says a helicopter uses a magnet to lift the pursuer's car and drop it into Tokyo Bay. Very Excellent nice. Excellent stuff. Okay, we are on to gadgets and weapons. What is unique about Bond's watch? I'll say that again. What is unique about Bond's watch? Well, I, I guess it would depend on the film in which we're talking about. Okay, if I tell you it is The Spy Who Loved Me. It has a ticker tape in it. Yes, indeed. Mm. Lovely jubbly. Okay, on to locations. Can you please tell me what is the name of the casino in Macau where Bond meets Severine? In fact, it was mentioned early on in this podcast. Uh, the name of the casino, is it the Golden Dragon? Oh, very close. It's the something dragon. The Chinese dragon? No. <laughs> um, if if you were really light, and what would you do? If you're really heavy, you'd sink. But if you're really light... Floating dragon. Yes! Nice. <laughs> Lovely. All right. I'll give you a half mark for that because you've got the dragon. Thanks, I'll man. give you three quarters of a mark. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How about that? Okay. So we are on to crew and behind the scenes. Now, 
In which city did the world premiere of Thunderball take place? I'll say In that which again. City? Yes. In which uh, city did the world premiere of Thunderball take place? I, I, I don't know. I feel, it's I feel a tricky like, one, this. I feel like London, but then maybe the Bahamas was involved. So maybe, maybe it was... Miami or something, or I don't know. No, it's a, it's a really tough one, here. this, yeah. <clears throat> because I remember thinking initially, oh, I remembered Paris, um, but then I remember there's a link between this one and the next film, and you also also the the actual premiere location has been mentioned in the last three minutes. Oh shit! I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> it was Tokyo. Was it really? Yeah, Thunderbolt premiered in Tokyo. That's a surprise. So there we go. Yeah, that's a that's a good good question. A tough one. That why one. was it in Tokyo? Um, I guess well, Jap- Bond became huge in Japan, didn't it? Like yeah. massive uh, during the Bond phenomenon, and I think they wanted to play on that. And also, I don't know, maybe whether that helped with the "You Only Live Twice" thing. I don't know. Huh, maybe interesting. Who knows? But yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're on to cast and characters. Can you please tell me who? Does Eva Green play? Esper Lind. Yes. And for a bonus point, now this will bring you back up. Can you tell me what her alias was within the film? What her alias was within the film? Stephanie Broadchest. Yes, yes Tom. I love it. Absolutely nice. killing it. Okay. So final question is about the films. What is Zorin trying to destroy in Operation Main Strike? Uh, that would be um, Silicon Valley. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Beautiful, Tom. Beautiful. Very nice. So you pulled it out of the bag there. That was a tough question. A couple of tough questions in that one. It certainly was. I, 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 I'm I, happy with my – what I like is when I get something wrong, it's not a stupid one, and I learn something no. from yes. my lack of knowledge. So the Tokyo premiere is a new thing that I never knew, so I, I feel, I feel go. good. You know, that's going to be lodged in there now for a while. In your failure, a failure is always an opportunity to learn, Chris, isn't it? So I, it. I, I feel like it's always a win in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Do you think that's the same with Bond, or would he never know because he's never lost? <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess he's never lost. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I guess he doesn't learn anything. Bless him. No, no, poor Bond. Okay, there we are. That's Tommy Trivia for this week, Done and Dusted. Now, our final quiz game of this episode is... Is the music That's right. This is Guess the Music Cue, where I play a little snippet from different cues from each of the films. And this, in fact, we'll have a little listen to last week's because I think you had a bit of an idea on this one. It yeah, might have struggled, did. actually. But here is last week's music cue. Ooh, now then. Now then, now then. You <laughs> sound like Jimmy Savile. Um, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about that one actually. Um, composer, give me the composer. Is it John Barry? Yes. Give me the Bond actor. Is it Roger Moore? Yes. Give me early or late, Rog. Early. Late. Yes. Yes. <laughs> is it octopusy? <laughs> yes. Right. It is octopusy. Now, come on. Uh, I. I mean, it was quite a short clip. This one, so it is tricky, but uh, it's quite a serious moment early on in the film. Is it Mishka and Grishka um, running through the forest, killing double O nine? Oh my Eight. god! He's only gone and done it. No, nice. no, go with your gut. Go with your gut. Double O nine. So this is literally just you know he double O nine climbs onto that bridge and they're about to get in with the knives and stuff like that, and then he gets caught and then falls back into the river. Very Absolutely nice. brilliant, Tom. I'm happy I love with that. It. That was good. Yeah, All super right. proud of you, man. Have you got anyone <laughs> right. for me this week? I do indeed. Now, this one you are going to know within two bars, I think, right. if, if, if it has bars in it. <laughs> okay, here is a music cue for this week. Uh, 
Oh, that's a nice one. I like that. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. you'd like that. It's got some, yeah. some swagger in there. I like it. Definitely a bit of swagger. Okay, so we'll come back to that next week then and uh, see if you've got an idea about that one. Beautiful stuff. All right, then. So that about rounds out our review of GoldenEye. I, I'm just very excited to talk about, about GoldenEye. It's very uh, it's a, it's a favourite of mine. Um, obviously, for everybody, get your 90-second reviews in because we want to hear what you have to say. So make sure you go over to jamesbondradio.com, click the send voicemail button on the far right hand side and let us know what your thoughts are about GoldenEye in 90 seconds or less, whether it's good, whether it's bad or whether it's in the middle. Are you excited for that, Chris? I am. I think that's some of my favourite episodes of the listener reviews and mm. we've had some absolute corkers over the year, over the last few couple of years. So yeah, really looking forward to that. And I want to hear as many as, as we can get in. Literally like every single person who's listening to this Get on the website, press that button, send a voicemail. We want to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Yeah, don't delay. Get it done. Get it, get it, get it, get your homework in early, basically, is what we're saying. Yeah, don't exactly. wait till the last minute because you might miss yeah. it. But it's uh, good right. stuff. All right, then. So we will return as per usual next week. Thank you for putting up with my scratchy, gravelly <laughs> voice this week. Hopefully, I will be back on top form for next time. Real sure. I'll give you some throat seats in between. You'll be all right. Thanks, man. A couple man. of lockets or something. It. You'll be fine. Yeah, no worries. All right. Well, take care, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.